Let's build an epic Airbnb clone application with React Native, Expo Router and authentication using Clerk. Hey everyone, what's up? This is Simon from Galaxies.dev and in today's big massive tutorial we are replicating the Airbnb UI with React Native. We're gonna have a lot of different steps in this video and this video is also sponsored by Clerk. You can check it out. I've used Clerk before for user authentication. We have another tutorial on this channel and they have a great free tier to get started. I think up until 5k users and you're gonna see in the video how easily we can integrate Clerk with React Native and Expo and in the end also how we can update user data and how we can apply the profile image and how we can just use Clark and the different hooks with Expo file based routing. Throughout the video we're gonna use a lot of code, you're gonna find everything linked below this video and of course make sure you subscribe to the channel to stay updated about all the latest builds coming in the future. Let's do a quick run through of the application and the things you're gonna develop now. In the first part you're gonna learn how to set up the Expo file based routing. So we're gonna build something like this, like a modal overlay, we will not do any kind of the actual views and the styling but we're going to focus really on the basics so we're going to have uh, the basic setup the navigation with a tab bar how we can create custom tabs and also how we can go into a details page or how we can open a modal in the second part we will then talk about clerk authentication and how we can bring clerk into our app we're going to automatically check when the application loads for a user and then we're going to implement a sign-in page with uh, apple sign-in google and facebook and yes this is pretty easily done with clerk it will automatically open so i create an account with Google I can just click continue and immediately I will be signed in with my user data and we're gonna use that in the application with some cool hooks from Clark as well in the third part we're gonna talk about the explore page and the custom header the custom header is the area up here which is divided into this part where we have two buttons and the second part down here which is like a horizontal scroll which has some nice little features to it like automatically scrolling these elements in part 4 we talk about how we can create create a list like this with a lot of items and also how we can create this detail view and there's more to this detail view than meets the eye so there's actually a parallax header which scrolls out the image slowly and you also see this header effect with a white header becoming uh, uh, yeah opacity 1 and now opacity 0 we're gonna use reanimate we're gonna use interpolation to create this effect and just focus on the interaction between list and the details page part number five is then about a map there is actually a map hidden here right behind this so within that map I will be able to see locations in Germany and we're gonna talk about how we can create markers on the map and also how we can add clusters like this how we can uh, design those clusters and then with a click go into the details of one of these offerings so the whole map including marker will be discussed in part 5 part 6 is about the listing which is now part of a bottom sheet so this is a bottom sheet I can pull up from the top and it seamlessly works again just like this and with a click on map I can bring it down I can also scroll it from code we're gonna talk uh, about a little hack to update our maps and our listings as well as uh, what we already did before with reanimated to make the animation of these transitions a bit better in part 7 we will then focus again on clerk and the user profile screen we're gonna create this simple little screen in which I can update my user data which will then be reflected on the clerk side and we will also be able to take an image from our photo library which will then update clerk again and the whole logic for for logging the user out and then logging the user back in. In part 8 in the final chapter of this video we will talk about a modal. We will talk about this modal specifically, how it enters, how we can create a blurred background, how we can create these nice little cards with different features to them. So we can switch between the active cards and they're gonna be nice little transitions using reanimated. This first card has a horizontal scroll, the second card has a cool date picker component and the third one has a little bit of state and logic to create these lists. We will also add a custom header just like this as in the official app and we're gonna have two buttons here at the bottom to either clear our whole view or click search to go back to our application. So that's everything you will learn in this video. It is really a lot. I guess it's going to be three or four hours. I hope you can stick with me until the end. Again, link below this video. Check out Clark, the sponsor of this video and now enjoy the Airbnb tutorial.
All right, so let's start the fun by creating a new Expo application. I'm gonna run create Expo app, gonna call this Airbnb, and I will use the tabs template. And I think currently we're at SDK 49 when I record this. So we're gonna have the Expo router version two installed in our project. In this first part, we're gonna set up the layout, um, the navigation, especially with the Expo file-based routing, because it's a different concept compared to React Navigation that you might have used in the past, or if you're just new to React Native, then, well, congratulations, you're using uh, the hot tools right in here. Additionally, what we need is some fonts. I wanna want some fonts, so I just picked up these Google fonts, so the Montserrat font, you can download the whole family. And we're gonna add that to our project as well. You can also, of course, just uh, use whatever you want as a font. I just wanna demonstrate that we can also um, have our custom font included with our Expo application. I'm gonna put this down because this always confuses me when it's up. Uh, we're gonna put this side by side. And we're gonna zoom in a bit for you. So in my workspace, I will zoom in Ooh, lightning speed. Here we go more space to the side and here we go um let's continue by actually we don't need anything else to install everything should be set up so we can just run npx expo which executes the local expo cli of the project and you can type start or you can just hit enter because npx expo is actually an alias for npx expo start then we got the options i could scan this now with my iphone actually let's do this could be fun uh, and that, if you haven't done it, should install the Expo Go application. And also, if you just want to run it locally, you can press I for the iOS simulator, A for Android, or as you can see, it's actually building on my iPhone right now, so you get this progress. But anyway, I'm going to type I as well, because I really want to see it here in the simulator. Okay, this is the basic setup. Um, we have some files. Uh, we have some configuration files, which we're also gonna touch in a second, but most importantly, we're gonna live in the app folder. So in the app folder, there's a tab bar defined with this group, so if you use the brackets, then make sure that this does not appear in the URL, so if you would deploy this to the web, but this is actually grouped. Um, so a group of files, we're gonna reuse that, we're gonna probably remove a lot of the files, and up here we have actually information for if we would deploy this as an HTML, as a website. We have a modal, we have a wildcard here for anything else, for other paths um, that don't match any other files. But we're gonna get really, uh, remove a bit of this stuff. So I'm gonna remove all of this. I will actually remove everything here in the components folder and we're gonna start pretty fresh with our application. Um, the first thing we can actually do is add our fonts. So it's currently using the space mono uh, something fund. We don't want that. What we want is we want to use the Montserrat font. So let's add bold, regular and semi bold uh, to that folder. And within the layout file, we can now load that. We can probably keep most of the stuff in here. Uh, so the error boundary, if an error comes up, our initial route will be tabs as well. Um, we're gonna use this code as well, which prevents the splash screen from automatically hiding while we still load our font. So that's a little trick that we see down here implemented in the root layout. So they are loading the space mono. Let's actually change this to something else. So I will load uh, something and call this mon, mon sb or mon b for regular, semi-bold or bold. And with the hook use fonts, we can now wait until these fonts are loaded and then actually, um, oops, uh, then hide the splash screen. So that's a little trick if you wanna load a custom font because while it's not loaded, we're just gonna return nulls so there will be no layout. And otherwise we're just gonna return the root layout, which is the place we can start. I will actually remove a bit to make this easier. So what we have in here is simply a stack navigation for our application. None of these files exist, that's true. Are we using them? Yeah, probably we're using them. So I'm gonna get rid of, um, yeah, I'm really gonna get rid of everything inside tabs. It's just annoying. Uh, so we're gonna do it our own. Um, as we can see, we have a stack which loads the tabs layout. So let's, in the tabs layout, define our actual tab bar because the goal for this first part is to set some, uh, something up that resembles the Airbnb UI, which currently looks like this. Um, so at the top, we have a special header. We're gonna touch that. We have, like, let's do this. Um, 
we have that area here which will trigger like a modal or a popover then we have this area which is like a horizontal scrollable thing so i can scroll into that direction uh, this is a list so this whole stuff until here is a list component basically the main screen of our application and with this one we're gonna actually hide the list and show a map which sits in the background but we're gonna do all of that later for now what we want to do is implement this the tab bar which shouldn't be too hard so let's do this within a new layout file here layout.tsx we're gonna define our actual tab bar um, so we're gonna do react native functional export I have a little uh, shortcut here in actually it's not a shortcut it's an extension in Visual Studio Code that you can install like react snippets or react native snippets um, then we go ahead and we use tabs from Expo router if we don't do anything uh, inside the tabs that actually works so you can just create an index.tsx here uh, let's call this one page and we'll just copy this over and let's do another one and call this explore.tsx and then we're going to see something interesting uh, let's call this explore uh, which is if the app finally loads again i guess we broke it a bit so let's reload okay here we go so we now already have that tab bar down here we have automatically the tab bar just with this setup so if you don't specify anything for the expo router it will automatically pick up the files next to it so in this case we're doing a tab bar and the tab layout and it picks up the explore page and it also picks up the other page which was called index <coughs> um, actually we need a few more pages so let's copy the stuff from here and let's do so we have a wish lists tsx um, we will actually not really implement those but we need the files to create our tab bar interface um, then we have an inbox.tsx let's put in inbox and then we have a profile as well profile.tsx i really want to carve out all the pages for the application that we might need um, and then we can create this so we have five tabs down here uh, the order is not correct and we're going to use the index file as the trips file so index should move in the middle we will not call it trips because it will be the actually it's the explore one sorry about that index is going to be explore of course uh, that's the page we are interested in and that's the page we want to develop right now so we can actually keep it like that but for the other pages uh, we still need a different setup we need probably different colors uh, we need a different icon so let's start with the colors we can do this i think the template here comes yeah with the colors file and I'm going to replace this with just an easy block with a primary and a gray and a dark color. That should be enough for our case because it's like the Airbnb red color. And then we can customize our tab bar. Uh, let's start easy. Tabs.screen is how we can affect one specific screen. The name is always the name of the file. So if I want to do something for the index one, I'm using index here. Then you will not use what Copilot is telling. Actually, I want to um, disable Copilot in a second. But for now, uh, can we do this a bit bigger? I want to use mm, this whole space available here. Okay, um, so for the index page, I want to specify some options here. And these options will first of all be title. And the title um, should be... I think that page actually does not render a title in the end. Let's, let's just do a tab bar. Uh, label so the tab bar label here will be explore but uppercase explore and let's just close it for now and see how this affects the tab bar okay cool we have a new title we can also change our tab bar appearance at the top level uh, but before that let me quickly disable copilot because that will confuse you uh, more than it helps in this one so if we want to affect this at the top level we can specify some screen options here <clears throat> and the first thing i want to say is the tab bar active tint color and we're going to reuse my own colors uh, we're going to use the primary color so let's see and voila we get this nice <clears throat> red stuff from uh, the airbnb application mm. What's missing here is, of course, the icon. 
But there's something else that I want to bring your attention to, and that is this here. So as you can see, we're using a relative path, and throughout the application, that will definitely look ugly in most places. And there is a better way to actually handle this today. And we're going to set this up real quickly. Um, we're going to do it now because I just noticed it for the first time. So within my app JSON, I will scroll down to the experiments where we have already typed routes. So this is an experiment to have statically uh, typed routes with the Expo Router version 2. And we can also have TS config path set to true. Now, this is not everything. Once we've done this, we need to head over to the TS config of our project and we need to add a little block here. So under compiler options, um, I'm setting the base URL to dot, oops, not to dot, and then I will add an array of path. So everything from the top level will be available at add something. Okay, sounds a bit mystical maybe, but let me show you how this looks in reality. If we now go back here, instead of saying dot 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 dot, we can just say add slash constants colors. And you see, no problem, TypeScript is happy, this is totally legit. Um, okay, <laughs> great. Um, probably, probably I should restart this one. Uh, <laughs> good example, completely breaking this. Um, but anyway, should work. Uh, it's loading again. And usually, yeah, it's just a problem of the build. So with a reload, this is fixed. And from now on, we can use it like this. So if we want to access the components folder later, the constants, we can just do it like this. And I think that's a lot better uh, than having the relative path all the time. Um, what else? Additionally, I might want to use my actual uh, font. So let's say the tab bar label style, tab bar label style style should use the font family and I will use mon sb. So remember this is the name we gave it and we see it becomes a bit more bold down here. So it's definitely working with our font that we're loading in the topmost layout file. So the code we have in here seems to work fine so far. Um, do we need anything else in here now? Let's let's finish the tab bar before we move on to the other pages. So back to this one. Uh, so we have the explore page um, that needs a custom icon as well. So let's use a tab bar icon here and we're going to specify something. And what we want to do is we also want to extract some params here. So we can actually get these as arguments. So we can get um, the color and we can get the size. That helps us to build an icon or add an icon that actually looks like it's in the right place. And for the icons, we can use the Ionicons uh, from Expo that are bundled with this. So they're actually different packages that we can use. So I usually like to use the Ionicons, but in this case, I couldn't find uh, everything in the Ionicons. So instead, I will use um, the material community icons. And I think we might have to use, um, actually, I think we might have to use a lot of different ones. But we can import them just like this. Let's try if I want for explore, um, what are they using? like a search, right? Like just like a search. Um, let's see if I put in material community icons, uh, name, do they have like a search? Let's see. Uh, of course not. So let's filter by material community icons and search. Oh, come on, they have like tons of searches, but not a single, not, not just a lens. Oh, what is this? They don't have like a lens. Oh, come on. That's crazy. Like this. Everyone has a search. Font awesome. Yeah, okay. Let's use font awesome in that case. Okay, font awesome, name search. And yes, we got the search. So if we just use it like this, it looks kind of odd as you can see. So we need to pass through the color, color, and as well the size and use the arguments of this function. And as a result, it will actually have the right size and right color. Actually, this looks like super big. That is actually a bit too much for me. Um, I feel like the Ionicons would be great in that case as well. So yeah, let's just add them as well because we can easily import them. And if we use this, we just have to swap it out 
And yeah, that has a nicer touch. That one looks better. That one certainly looks better. Okay, and just like this, we're gonna apply now our style to the different tab screens. So within the tab one, we're gonna define all the different screens. So the second one in the Airbnb application is wish lists. So wish lists. Uh, this one should just be uppercase wish list. And for the icon, we're gonna use um, heart outline. Okay, tab number two, done. Okay, number three is trips. So for number three, or for item or screen three, we have trips. I'm gonna put this down here as well. And for trips, I will use now finally the font awesome one. So font awesome five, and I will use Airbnb because there's actually a logo that they use. Uh, oops, trips. Don't we have like a explore inbox? Uh, okay, yeah, explore is actually not, yeah, I messed, Simon messed this one up. So let's call this one trips because my explore is actually the index. So I, I trolled myself on that one. Um, okay, we have explore, wish lists, trips. Then we still need inbox and profile. Okay, we're back in the game. So let's copy this. And this one's going to be inbox. Uh, no, inbox, that's how you spell it. Inbox, no, just like this. It's hard to type inbox, right? Um, please, hope you agree with me. Uh, we're gonna use now the material community icons and I will use, oops, a message outline. So we're gonna have to be, get a bit creative here in terms of which of those packages we are using, but since we can easily add them, that feels really good to have like everything available to us. And finally, we're gonna use Ionicons one more time. Oh, where is Ionicons? I don't wanna type this. Uh, and we use person circle, person circle outline. Okay, compare this. We got explore, we got wish list, we got trips, inbox, and profile. I think we got pretty close. Only this one here, like the person, uh, but I don't know, like person, I think there's not really anything that would work better. All of them have like a filled person. I don't know why. I really don't know why. But anyway, we have the tab bar, um, page, wish list, trips, inbox, and profile that we can work on. Good, that's a good start. So this is the tab bar, but we're gonna have more. Um, if we start the Airbnb application later, what we want is as well to have an overlay or sort of models. So let's add a new folder in here, and I will call this, as always on the second try, uh, models. Actually, I will group them, models. Um, and then we're gonna have the login modal, login.tsx. Mm -hmm. Page, I should probably just, I don't know, give it better names in the future. And then we also have the booking.tsx. So the booking um, will be a modal that can be triggered from our screen, I think. Yeah, from up here, we're gonna trigger the modal for booking. For now, <coughs> let's see and just add this to the index file. And we can trigger this by using the Expo Router link component and set the href to one of those links. We're gonna actually add code completion, so let's just use it like this. This should open the login. And then we're gonna add a second one down here that should open the bookings. We just wanna check out if we were able uh, to craft the UI. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, let's just call this booking. Okay, so login brings up some sort of locking, booking brings up this. Then we need one more thing. Uh, let's do another folder and that will be called listing. So once we develop this list, we're gonna click on something and then it show a detail page. And on that details page, we need to retrieve some information. And we do this by passing an ID to that page. And we do it by specifying it down here as ID TSX. So if we do it like this, we're actually able to get that information here. So we can get the ID now on this page by calling use local urge params from the Expo router. We can actually strongly type this 
with ID like this. Okay. And then let's just put a look down here. And then on my index page, I will add another one. So this will test like a listing details page. Uh, and we put this under slash listing slash whatever. So we can put in whatever we want here. Um, and now let's check the locks simultaneously. We get the lock. So I hope I'm co not covering this with my head, but it should show that we are on page 1337 or that we can at least access that ID. Good. That means I think we have all the routes for our application in place. I just want to add one more thing. There's always one more thing. Uh, we're going to clean up this uh, here, the topmost layout file. And down here where we define the general stack, um, we specify for tabs that we don't want to show the header. That's good. Um, but for the login, that should actually be a modal. That should not just be a page pushed onto the stack. So let's change the presentation of that by targeting modals slash login. Okay, that is the page we want to target and we want to specify some options. Okay, and for the options, I want to set the presentation now to modal. And if I now close this and hit save, we should see that if I try the login, it comes up as this card. On Android, it might look slightly different, but this is the card we wanted to have. And of course, we can do the same stuff. Uh, we can affect all the different fields. I can give it a title, uh, log in or sign up. Um, and then I can also give it some styling up there. So header style should probably be font family uh, options. Oh yeah, it's actually header title style. And then font family mon sb. Okay, and it becomes our custom font. Additionally, I will also uh, right now include a header, um, a header button. So for the header left field, there's also a header right, like a slot where you can inject something. And for header left, I want to inject my own. Um, we can just wrap this in brackets. I don't actually know if we need brackets. Um, touchable opacity. So that will wrap a button or an icon and give us this little um, effect when you press it. And on press, we're going to do something. And I will just put in Ionicon's name. Um, I will use close outline here and set the size to, I don't know, 28 or something. So now we should, um, yeah, well, do we actually have to do something? I don't think so. Uh, well, we can also get, just get rid of it for the moment. And then we have this close button up here uh, in our header. In fact, what we want to do is, of course, close that page when we click it. Um, so we could use a link around it or let's, let's for the fun of this, um, inject the router. We're going to probably do this in other places again. For now, let's see, we can just call use router from Expo Router to access the router. And then within my touchable opacity, I will call router dot um, back. Okay, so if I now click this, exactly, it should close this view again. Good. Um, then let's do something for um, the next stack screen. So just doing a bit of custom stuff here in preparation for what's coming for the listing slash ID. And yes, we can use the syntax exactly like this because remember it should just, oops, uh, this should be the same as the file name. And that is the file name. It's listing slash this. So keep that in mind. Even if it looks strange, this is the right way to customize that page. Uh, and for that page, as an option, I want to set the header title to nothing because we're going to have a pretty, pretty epic, um, what is it called? A parallax. Yeah, it's a parallax scroll that we want to develop on that page. And finally, we had one more stack screen. Uh, that one's being called modals, uh, modals slash, what was it? Booking. I think it was booking. Okay, and for booking, 
we're gonna have the same custom options here and I will close this already. So what I wanna define in here is um, a presentation of um, transparent modal. Let's see, if I now click bookings, um, you see it kind of covers the screen and we can't really see uh, what's going on. So yeah, that should be right. I will also for now just add the header left here like we did before. So now it should also have this button so I can actually close it. And as an animation, yeah, we're doing a little, little not a spoiler, but a little preview of what's coming up and what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a fade animation. So it fades in and it fades out. You see this? That looks pretty, pretty cool. And of course, we have now a transparent model, but what we actually wanna do is we will have um, a blurred background. So that means it comes in with this blur, I can't describe it, but it's going to be epic. All right. We have the Expo router set up. You now have a tab bar. You have a topmost layout file, which is always the first thing that's called. You're gonna see, um, we're gonna work in this if we wanna wrap like a context around our app in the next step when we introduce clerk for the authentication here. That's the place we're gonna do this or if you have anything else, uh, it should go in the topmost layout file. We're using file-based routing. So we have a tab bar which has its own layout file. We have a group of models that we can call with different presentations. So either a card or a fading in model. And we can already go to the details page. And as you can see, this actually covers the whole page because that details page is here in listing. It is not in tabs. If it was in tabs, it would actually display in this first tab and the tab bar would still be visible while we're on the details page. Sometimes that's what you want. So like having uh, each tab should have its own stack layout. In this case, we have a surrounding stack layout. So we push it basically above the tabs. All right, I think that's enough for the setup. We have all the files so we can uh, confidently work in them. And now let's add authentication. All right, now we wanna add authentication to our Airbnb clone. And one of the easiest ways to do this is using Clerk. So you can check it out at clerk.com. You can actually get started for free if you check out the pricing. So there's a free tier that you can use up until 5K monthly users uh, with basically all the features included afterwards at 25 per month, um, which is 0 0.02 per additional user. That's like a no brainer. And they really offer all the authentication that you need and it's really easy to use with uh, Expo and React Native. So in the past I already had a tutorial about this. It was called, I don't know what it was called, but you can find it on Galaxies as well. Uh, full tutorial and the written tutorial also here on YouTube Master React Native authentication and the tutorial also on Galaxies uh, if you want to look that up. However, we're gonna go through the basics again in this part because probably you haven't seen that. So uh, create an account and then head over to the dashboard of your clerk application and add an application. So I already have something to test, but I will do a new one. I will call this Airbnb video. Um, how will your users sign in? So usually on the web, you can create this kind of component with clerk. Uh, for React Native, it's going to be custom anyway, so we're gonna change this a bit. But anyway, yeah, we will probably have Facebook and also Apple sign in, um, username, uh, let's just create it like this. I think it won't change a lot anyway if we did this. So now we can select from one of those quick starters and we're gonna use Expo. So let's copy this over, the clock publishable key. And let's go back to our application and we're gonna put an ENV file at the root of the project. So here we go, ENV, and we're gonna put this in. Um, will this work automatically? Um, let's let's give it a try. Usually it should be prefixed with Expo, but let's, let's test this out uh, just like it is. So what we can do now is we can go to our layout and we also need to install two additional packages. So what we need to install is, oops, of course, the clerk package. So npm install at clerk slash clerk expo. And then we will also follow this up with an additional package to make the storing of our token more secure. Because on the web, you can use all sorts of, I guess on the web, it's just using local storage or 
something like that. But on Expo or on React Native land, we can also install the Expo Secure Store package instead. So let's see how we can use it. First, we should load our key. Let's do this up here. So I'm going to grab this clerk. Uh, let's call this clerk publishable key equals process dot env dot and now what was the name of it uh yeah that one okay and close that so now we got that key and additionally as i said um we want to use the expo secure storage package so we can create our own custom token cache um, and later pass this to our context to our provider and we're gonna just implement two functions we're gonna have a get token function here uh, and I get token function gets a key string and it will try to get the information from expo secure storage so let's add expo secure store in here and then what our function will do is it will try to load that icon uh, that item from secure store and same if you want to write it we're going to use safe token here and use set item async i think i'm missing one of these good so that's all we need and now we can just scroll down a bit in our um code here in the layout and what i want to do is i want to extract something from use auth so use auth is a hook that we can import from clerk expo that gives us all the information to a user to the current state and so it has is loaded if the package is actually loaded and ready and also is signed in and that's what we're gonna use so in the original airbnb uh, application what happens is they don't enforce like a strict authentication you can use it but if you're not authenticated this model this card this login screen which is in our case this one comes up automatically in the beginning and that's what we want to do as well you can also later trigger it like if you close this you can still log in from different places but we want to have this automatic trigger of that page and therefore we're going to add a use effect in here okay so that's going to be executed uh, when is loaded changed and then we're going to check if um, is loaded is ready and the user Where's my end? <laughs> and the user is not signed in. So that means clerk is ready, but user is not authenticated. What do we want to do in that case? We want to push our login. So we use router.push and we push models slash login. Okay, let's hit save. And the app starts. And the auth context is not found. Yeah, that's good because we actually haven't wrapped our clerk provider around the app. So let's do this up here uh, where we really define the root layout and let's wrap it around this. So we can use the clerk provider from clerk expo. Um, is there a different from yeah, clerk react? Okay, yeah. Uh, and we pass the publishable key to it, which is of course uh, the clerk publishable key we got from our environment. And then we set our custom token cache to the token cache we defined a minute ago. Make sure you wrap this around the root layout. Uh, unable to, what? <laughs> unable to, why is it unable? Uh, what's your problem with that? Uh, let's see, I feel like, oh yeah. <laughs> we should probably wrap this accordingly in brackets here. So nobody gets mad. Okay, here we go. Um, Clerk provider is still not super happy about this. Uh, we have the token cache and we have um, type children. Uh, uh, let's see, let's see. Who's mad with me right now? Uh, we have the clerk provider and the publishable key. Um, okay, yeah, that was just a TypeScript issue because that key could be undefined, but I'm pretty sure if you did everything correct, it won't be undefined. So, um, yes, I totally messed up the app. Is it still restarting or did I like destroy everything now? Let's just kill it. Let's just kill it. Uh, close, close and reload because it's actually pretty fast to do this anyway. So open iOS and let's hope for the best that clerk 
is now working. Uh, something went wrong. Clock, the publish week. Okay, yeah, that's actually good. Uh, is invalid. Why is my key invalid? Uh, okay, that I didn't expect that one, but let's check. Um, probably, yeah, I feel like this is not working because Expo usually puts Expo public in front of uh, the ENV variables. Uh, and I assume it's not working like this. So if I just take this one here, if I would just manually copy it, that's a good test. If I would manually copy it and not use the process.env stuff in here, if I would do it like this, um, yeah, it immediately works. So okay, let's check it again. I can hit refresh, app starts, we're not signed in, and automatically the login comes up. So our logic is correct. The only problem is with the loading here. And that's because I think this is expected in expo public clerk publishable key. So let's change it. Let's change the name like this. And then let's do a reload here. Um, and then it should work. Yeah, nice. So now it should pick up my key from the NV file and it automatically spins up the login. We now also have clerk added as a context, as a provider here around our application. That means the hook, the use auth that we use here in the child component is now available in all the pages of our application. We can always check like, is the user authenticated here? What's the name of the user? What's the email? Um, we can easily log out from other places and that just will help us uh, in the rest of our app. Very good. Uh, we probably do we want to add like um, may, maybe on the on the profile screen uh, for testing, we're going to add a lockout. Uh, so let's go to the profile screen and I will just for now add a simple button in here. Um, title lock out and on press, I will do the sign out. And we should be able to get that by extracting now sign out from uh, use auth from clerk expo here. And actually I will also get um, is signed in here. Okay, so on press I will do on si uh, sign out. Okay, and I will also check if not signed in. In that case, I will also render another button to trigger our sign in. Sign in again on press. And our sign in is handled within the, uh, oh, we can, actually we can use a link component in that case. That makes it a bit easier. So we can just use the expo router link with the href, which then triggers our models login again. And then uh, lock in. Actually, we need to put this in text. Otherwise, React Native screams at me. Yeah, you can't use text anywhere outside of the text. Just always getting so mad in my face. Um, Okie dokie. I think we got it. Okay. So this automatically comes up. If I didn't do this, um, I can still trigger the login from here. Or I can also lock out, but we are locked out anyway so far. Uh, we we, we, we kind of need to focus on the login instead now. And that's what we're going to do. So let's close a bunch of these pages here. Uh, actually, all of them. I don't want to have them right now. So what we want to focus on is the models login page, which automatically comes up. And I want to add one additional file as well. So outside here, I will create a new folder. We'll call this hooks because there's one hook that's recommended by a clerk. And I will call this, actually I got this from GitHub, use warmupbrowser.ts. And that just helps us for Android to warm up the browser when we do the sign in. Um, so the browser comes up faster. That can significantly, is significantly improve the performance on Android. So uh, make sure you get this in here. Uh, it's a simple hook we export, which runs once in the beginning to warm up async the web browser or cool down async uh, once we're done. Um, just want to check, did we add, did it has our pro, yeah, our project has it. Okay, we're good, we're Gucci. 
uh, uh, let's go back to the login and actually use use warm up browser here in the beginning so our browser is fine on android good we can also reload so this is the screen i want to work on now and we're going to first time dive into a bit of work with react native to create a screen we're going to start by setting up a little style sheet here so style sheet dot create um, and here we're going to define, let's first define a little container for our application. Uh, that one will have flex one, so it spans across the whole page. Background color should be set to white in this case. And I will also add a bit of padding. So there's going to be quite a lot of padding in different uh, places in our app. And here we go. This is our container. Nice, nice white color in this one. Um, what we're actually trying to build is something that resembles this view. Uh, we will not do this, but if you switch this to email, it will actually show up um, and just an email input where you can press continue. So that is the plan uh, that I actually had right now. Let's do this. Uh, we have the primary color. We probably need to define like a little button. Um, but we can do this, of course we can. We can do everything. We are able to do everything. Let's start by setting up a text input element uh, from React Native. Auto capitalize, I will set this to none. And placeholder email. And then we need some style. Uh, we need some style. Yeah, what, what kind of style do we need? Um, I kind of want to have like a general input field style. Mm, across the application, we're going to reuse some styling, like a default button or a text input. Um, and I'm going to put this hooks under constants. Uh, new file styles.ts. And I will export uh, const default styles from this file using stylesheet, uh, native stylesheet.create. And then uh, we can define something like uh, usual container stuff that we always reuse in our app, like flex one and background color, whatever. Uh, let's just set this to, uh, I think I had one before. I think this resembled the Airbnb color. And an input field could look like this. I will just bring in a bit of styling um, so we can actually, let's wrap this quickly up. So we can reuse this across our app. So there are a few styles. Uh, once again, the note that you can find all the code as well on GitHub for this Airbnb clone. So there's the style constant in case you don't want to type this, but you can also do this and give it a try for the input field. Just an input with white background and a bit of border color. For the button, that's going to be a button like this. So with a red background, 58 rounded uh, corners and items aligned in the center and of course the button text should be white in that case um, then we also have a button icon sometimes so that will be a button like this and then we have a footer element which we're gonna use i actually don't know where we're gonna use this um, but it's going to be in absolute position at the bottom so it just it sits down here somewhere uh, with a bit of padding and with a super thin hairline with thin uh, border top. Uh, so that is going to be a little footer component. All right, with these uh, default styles in place, let's go back to the login and we can now define for our text input that I want to use the default styles dot uh, input field, <coughs> which looks pretty good already out of the box. Um, but I probably want to have more margin at the bottom. Uh, so that's why I was using this array. I kind of want to have this default styling, but I also want to add my uh, own touch to this. So margin bottom, I will set to 30 because below the text input, remember we have this continue button. Um, so let's put this down there. And for that button, we can use a uh, touchable opacity. Touchable, where is it? Touchable opacity here. And we're gonna set the style of this one to my default styles dot button. So with those default styles, uh, creating the views will become a lot easier as we can reuse different styles. 
for example, I can now you reuse the button text, just say continue, and quickly I have this button component up and render it here. Um, and we can reuse that if we have a red button anywhere else again in my application. Good. Um, we will now also move into using an OAuth strategy. Um, that means we want to use Apple, Google, Facebook. So let's create this and of course this center component uh, first. So that's going to be pretty interesting because it's a nice thing that you can actually reuse in your application most of the time. I don't think I have like some styling for that yet. So let's create one and call this separator view. And that separator view should align the items in a row. So we're going to set the flex direction to row in this one and give the style styles.separator view. So then we have a uh, like a like a border or line left, a border line right, and in the center a bit of text. Uh, therefore, let's do three of these. So view, first one having some styling, um, and then we'll have like a border, bottom, uh, border, bottom, color. Let's use color first. Uh, I will just set it to black. And a border, bottom, width. And here we'll reuse what we used before, style sheet dot hairline width. So that's going to be a really, really thin line. Uh, if we check it out, we won't see anything, uh, but no problem. We're gonna see this in a second. Text, um, styles dot separator. And this will be uh, or, I think it's just or. Does it say separator or sep? Do you like, is it, I think it's in separator, <laughs> separate. Do you know this feeling when you look like at a word like five times, 10 times, and it's suddenly the, the whole letters fly in front of your eyes and you're like, is this really how you, how you spell that word? I sometimes get this and then like, I'm like standard words and you're, is this really true? Is this real life? I don't know. Uh, maybe it's just me getting crazy about stuff. But anyway, uh, for the separator view, I want to use the color uh, from our colors that we defined. So let's use gray. Um, then we see the or already. That's good. Um, and we can now expand this or make this use up most of the space by giving it flex one. As you can see, uh, now it looks like this. So I'm going to put another one behind this, then both of them take up as much space as they need. Uh, and the separator is in the middle. Now we just need to make sure that the separator view has a nice little gap between those elements and that we align the items correctly. So align items center. And probably we need some margin here, uh, margin vertical. Uh, of about, I don't know, 30. Yeah, that looks good. Looking good, doesn't it? Um, we're pretty good start. Mm. All right, let's continue. Now we want those four buttons down here so we can trigger our lock-in stuff. Um, those go behind the separator view. Uh, so down here in another view. And we do we... Uh, have we defined this? No, we, we kind of need our own styling now. So I want to make an outlined button. Uh, and for that, I have prepared some styling, which looks like this. These will have a white background, a super thin uh, or regular thin border of one uh, specific height border. We align the items in the center and we have some padding. Actually, nothing really crazy going on. It's just an outline button. It's, it's not like we're doing rocket science here. Okay, let's set up this one uh, using a touchable opacity again, touchable opacity. And then for the style, we use styles dot button outline. And then we put in our text, which will use styles dot button outline text. And the first one will just be continue with phone because currently email is selected. So this will now be continue with phone. Doesn't look too bad, right? Only thing that's missing is the icon. And again, if I look at continue now in front of my eyes, it becomes wrong. I should not look at this like this. Okay, Ionicons, uh, name, mail, outline. 
Um, actually, that is not mail, right? I don't know how it looks. It's probably like a phone outline. I don't know. Uh, is there an Ionicons for phone? Call? Uh, 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 we can filter this by Octicons. No, by Ionicons. Um, megaphone. No, not really megaphone. I just want to like device. I don't know. What's the name for, for call or something? Yeah, call probably. Call outline. Mm, although, I don't know. Okay, this is our icon. And if we give it the style, styles dot uh button icon do we have that already um or i think we defined it for a default button icon yeah then we probably see it somewhere yeah that's probably a bit too small uh let's use a size of i don't know 24 yeah okay that looks good that looks good and for that we just need three more to complete that view so let's just copy paste this all right, uh, if we easily want to have some padding between them, let's just define a gap of, I don't know, 20. And it looks like this, good, uh, even better. And then we gotta do the other one. So this is continue with Apple, uh, and that needs a different icon. So that should be the uh, material design logo Apple. And then we have continue with Apple. Mm, then we have the Material design logo Google and I should uh, copy this and this is I think Facebook Okay, so we got the three icons in here and then we of course have continue with Google and continue with Facebook <coughs> That looks good. I think all right um, Doing the sign-in with email is actually pretty I would say pretty boring, um, pretty easy. And that's exactly what we did in the previous um, tutorial with like the, the startup, the React Native clerk authentication. So uh, you can check out the written tutorial again for the email authentication, which requires um, a little custom flow. Um, I'm just gonna show you this because we're gonna do something else instead. So what it basically does is, there's a sign in that you can get from use sign in from a clerk. And then you can call sign in create uh, with the email address and the password of a user. However, then you still also need to manually um, verify that, which requires some more code. So creating a new user, we check this out. We're gonna have to prepare an email address verification and set the pending verification to true. And then uh, we still need to verify this on the screen. So this is like a custom flow because on the web, you can just drop in the clerk component on React Native. You have to do this in a bit different way. So I just want to show you this as a way to do the email sign in. Uh, and now we're going to do the uh, social authentication. I think because that is something I haven't shown you before. And I think it's even more interesting. So back to my clerk instance for a second. Um, we have used the basic setting. Here is uh, where you can customize the like the settings for the clerk app. Um, you can use email address. Uh, you can toggle these on if you want to allow usernames. <clears throat> what I actually want is yeah personal information. This block here. Um, I want to enable that users can change their first and their last name. I will apply these changes. We will actually not do this right now, but we're going to talk about color again at almost, I think, almost the end of this uh, Airbnb tutorial when we implement a profile page so the user can update its name and also image. What we want to do for now is we want to talk about social connections. So um, in the beginning, when we set up the app, I have enabled these. Or if you haven't done that, you can do it right now under social connection providers. And we can use Google, Facebook and Apple for sign in. And in fact, we could already use it right now without any configuration in development mode. So let me show you how. Um, we have the buttons in place. Uh, we want to have something called um, start oh oh flow and we can extract this from use uh use actually use oh out and then passing in the right strategy strategy 
And here we need to do something like OAuth Apple or Facebook. Let's just do it for one. However, uh, we're going to have three of these and I can't import the same name. So that is going to be a problem. As you can see, uh, they would all look like this. All right, I, I can't do it like this. So for TypeScript, I can now just say, okay, this is Google Auth, so I can map this to a different name. Okay, this is uh, Apple Auth, and then we have Facebook Auth. Okay, good. Additionally, I want to have like one function, and I don't want to pass strings around, so I will put up an enum up here. Uh, so really, you learn even more than React Native and, and Expo today. You're learning a lot about uh, everything, everything. That's important to me. You get like a good idea and feel confident, uh, confident about the things that we implement in here. You're just not randomly following this tutorial, um, but really like know and understand why we do certain things. Okay, so here we go. We create this enum, uh, apple, the string will be oh, uh, apple. And guess what? We have one third for Facebook. I don't know, is, are people still using Facebook sign-in? I don't know, I'm not really using it anymore. Um, I see it here and there, but I feel like Google and Apple have kind of taken over. Anyway, um, let's now do a function, a generic function, that I will call const on select auth. And that will make it easy to uh, assign this to our three buttons. So we're gonna pass, uh, uh, did I call this strat str Yeah. Good strategy. Uh, we're going to pass a strategy to this function. Okay. And that means I can now use this on the different buttons down here. Let's find the first one. Uh, this one's with Apple. So here's the touchable opacity. And I will add on press. On press, I will call on select auth. And to, oh, come on, I just need to get the brackets right. And on select auth, I want to use strategy.apple. Okay, so you see, this gives us nice code completion. I can now just reuse this. Second one uses Google. And then we have really a type safety in our page. Good. So these are passing the strategy that they want to use to this on select auth. And now the following function is proudly presented by, by Copilot. So when I developed this, Copilot immediately gave me the code. So what I want is I want to figure out basically if strategy is equal to Google, I want to use Google Auth. If it is equal to Apple, I want to use Apple Auth. And this is what Copilot came up with. So it's it's creating an object where the strategy here is the key and this is the value. And then it accesses that object at the key strategy. It's brilliant. Thank you, Copilot. Thank you for this. Uh, you really made my day when you came up with that code. Okay, um, next thing is that we can actually use this and we can uh, extract now the created session ID and also uh, set active from another hook from um, await selected auth. Okay, so this is my selected auth, which is basically this. I could also just use Google auth. That would be exactly the same. Um, so here we go. This is the actual OAuth process. I will now put in a little link down here uh, or what we get. And once we got this, so if we do get create session ID back, it means the user is uh, pretty much authenticated and we need to call set active. So calling set active is now relevant for our application, for the local application, as it tells the clerk SDK and the provider that the user is now authenticated. Um, and yes, we can need to call it like this, I think. And we need to pass in the session, which is now this session ID. Good, I think we got it. Actually, once we get this, I want to close this here. So I want to inject the router again. Mm, const router equals use router. No, I, uh, well, I don't want to have use route. I want to have use router. Um, and when we're done with this, I want to call router back, uh, which will just close the modal. 
By the way, we can also catch any errors that come up. I hope we don't see anything. So we'll just put in a console.error here and then we'll just error out oh, uh, error. So present some sort of alert and I feel like that was not the place. This is the place I wanna do this. Okay, <clears throat> are we ready? Are we ready for a test? I don't know, I, I feel like we are. Okay, Expo wants to use apple.com to sign in. Let's click continue. <clears throat> and <clears throat> this is now exactly what I wanted to tell you. We haven't done any configuration for this, but we can use this. So this opened up Apple. This will open up Google. And this will most likely open up Facebook for you. So it's doing the browser authentication. And yes, I know there are more native ways, especially for Apple sign. And I think for the others, there's not really a better native way to do Google or Facebook or maybe Facebook. I don't know. This is not yet implemented with Clerk. So um, I checked in with them. I asked about that feature and I think it's on their list. They know that they kind of want to have this at some point, that they need the native sign in. Uh, for now, this is what they got. And we can now actually use this to sign in. All right. And it looks like Clark wants to use my Apple ID. I will continue. I will do, not do this. And it closes and we see the session ID down here. And we can now also confirm by checking in our dashboard or under users that voila, I have this beautiful new user which has no image yet. I don't know why I think it can have an image, but anyway, we're gonna upload that image later anyway. Uh, and we have signed in our first user. Uh, our user is now also authenticated, which means if I reel out the app, we will not see that overlay again. You see, user is authenticated. Unless I go here, so sign in button is also gone because we're authenticated and only if I press lock out, I will be locked out again. And in that case, if I refresh, my cool popover comes up again. Okay, so as I wanted to tell you, this works really, really great and fast. However, this is the development way. Uh, you can use it like this to implement these things and quickly test this out as a uh, clerk has got you covered with these social connections and a default setup for the providers. However, if you want to actually use this in production, you're going to have to do a bit more. And I'm going to show you what you have to do for uh, Google because that's kind of okay to do and doesn't take too long. So if you want to set this up for production with Google, you're going to have to say, I want to use my custom credentials and you're going to have to pass in some information. This information comes from the Google Cloud dashboard. So you can create uh, an application or a project here in the Google Cloud and then create credentials. And I already did this, so I clicked Create Credentials OAuth Client. And within that client, you're gonna see some information. Um, what we need is we need to copy over this client ID and put it in here. Then we have the client secret. Let's copy that uh, client secret should be here as well. Go back, put it in. Then we have a redirect URI. This comes straight from clerk and is required because there's the information returned to. You're gonna put this down here uh, under the authorized redirect URIs. Then you're gonna press save um, and wait and hope for the best. Um, do we need any additional scopes? I don't think so. Uh, did I require anything in the past? No, I don't think so. So that should be good. Let's hit save and we're good. I just wanna show you that this is uh, described very well in the docs here at Clark as well. So as I said for Google, these just a few steps to enter your information. For Apple, this is a bit more complicated. Um, I mean, it's not complicated in that sense, it's just, a lot of sense, uh, a lot of steps. You need to be enrolled, of course, in the Apple developer program to continue this, which you anyway need if you want to develop iOS applications. And then you need to create some identifiers um, and certificates. You're going to create for these certificates different keys. Um, you're going to put them into Clerk as the information. You upload something. Um, it just takes a while and we'll probably cover like 45 minutes of this video. So if you're interested in the setup for 
uh, Apple with Clark, just let me know in the comments and we're gonna do this in the future as well. Um, and same, by the way, for uh, Facebook. So for Facebook, I don't know, it's probably not that long, but you're gonna have to create that Facebook app and then you're gonna copy over the app ID and secret. Uh, you have the redirect URI and that's it. So I guess Apple is actually the, the most challenging of those. In my case, I have configured this hopefully for Google correctly. Um, let's give it a try. Continue with Google and I will try this. That was fast. That was really fast. How did it know? Like, like how? I, I, how? How did it work? It kind of used automatically my Google authentication stuff and have my image. That's impressive, Clark. That's impressive. Uh, I'm impressed today. I didn't expect this to be that fast, but that just confirms and, and underlines the argument that I want to make that Clark is just super easy to add to our application. Um, I think we covered the login screen now. Uh, we've seen how we can automatically open our uh, model from the layout using is loaded or is signed in. And we can just use this in other places as well if you want to hide uh, certain elements or if you want to show something in your view. Additionally, we now have the login with this function probably uh, sponsored by Copilot. No, of course not. Um, and the actual function to trigger our OAuth process is this one. It just looks a bit obscure because we, we did it like this. Usually you're gonna find something like just uh, start OAuth flow here in the documentation. We just made this a bit more generic for our page. And by calling set active, we now have an active user in our application. Good, that was the part about authentication. Uh, we're gonna revisit this in the end to develop our profile screen with some uh, image upload as well. But for the next part, let's get back into some Airbnb core functionalities. Now we will focus on the first important part, which is the explore part. And we're gonna do two things. We're gonna try and render this custom header, which should resemble something like this. And then we're gonna also implement the list that actually displays the listing. So we're gonna get right into uh, some of the most important pieces of this tutorial. To get started, I think we're gonna do the header first. I actually changed the sides here, but I hope that's not confusing you. Um, and we're gonna say that this style is first of all using flex one as well. So I'm here now on the index page of the application, uh, which was our page. And what I wanna do is I wanna set for the stack a custom header. And we have used stack.screen in other places, but we can actually also use this right inside a page. That's not a problem. So in here, I can also change the appearance or set options for the stack of that particular page. And what I wanna do is I wanna actually render a custom header component. No, we don't have a component yet, so let's create one. I uh, will call this um, exploreheader.tsx. Um, yep, that's exactly what I wanna call it. And then I will just tell this view to please render the explore header. Uh, we don't have any props or anything else yet. And then we see Explorer header is displayed instead of what we got uh, otherwise. Additionally, um, I think we could probably also uh, add a new file. I'll call this one, oh, Visual Studio, when will this work? <laughs> Listings.tsx. So that's the component I wanna display in the actual view of this page. So I will call this here, listings, and then close it. So that will be like the main view of that page. However, we're gonna start with the implementation of our header. And since we added this to a custom component, we can now uh, freely play around in this. So as you can see, we got two parts. We got this part up here where we have one big button and this filter button. And then we have a second part, which is a scroll view with horizontal scroll and these categories. Now, let me quickly add some category data. Yeah, that's perfect, Simon, break the page. 
Um, I just used some random categories that I found and that uh, ChatGPT gave me and included an icon for these. We're going to use either Ionicons or Material icons for these. Um, I don't know which of these contains all of them, but we're going to eventually figure out. Um, but before we do that, let's probably begin with the big button up there. So I'm going to wrap this in a view uh, style. And as always, I will do a little style down here. So const styles equals style sheet. I really need a snippet. I think there is actually a snippet. I, I should use a snippet for that. Uh, React Native style sheet. Oh, there is a snippet. I could have used this my whole life. How much time did I waste? <laughs> oh no, I feel so bad right now. <laughs> oh no, no. Oh, anyway. Um, Let's do this. I will set the background color to white. This has a very specific reason that I will tell you in the end. Right now it's actually not too important, but it will become important. Also what you notice is that as we're using this custom header, our component gets totally lost up here and we really don't want to touch this area. This is a safe area up here. And if we want to respect this area up here, you can either use your own padding or you can just wrap the whole fun with safe area view and give this some styling as well. I think we need to pass in flex one as well. Wrap this around your app and then everything becomes better. Um, also this one should, I, I will do another view to make it more obvious. Um, this one will be the action row. So that should be the row with the two buttons because we kind of know that this will have the flex direction row. Okay, and then we're gonna do probably a link component. href will go to uh, the first one. Yeah, that's modal's booking. Uh, booking. And then we're gonna have another button after this one, which is, uh, let's use a touchable opacity here, touchable. Uh, opacity that will actually not trigger anything in our case. So I will just use a touchable opacity uh, Text filter whatever. I just wanted to get the the setup in here. Okay, where is the view? <laughs> uh, okay, the container also needs a flex of one uh, Flex not flexes um, And then we got my listings uh, Yeah where do we have like a view without anything? That's totally unnecessary, Simon. Um, oh, because then it wrecks everything. Come on. Just give me the header. Uh, we have the flex one up here on the safe area view. We have the uh, container styling and we have the action row. Um, I don't know why we're not seeing anything yet. Uh, we probably, I think we need to define our container height. Uh, this is actually not working with flex one. Let's just set this to 130. Um, now I'll set the background to something we can actually see. Okay, there we go. This is our top area. Uh, it's respecting the safe area. That's good. I will for to make sure also give this a background color of white. Okay, because otherwise I think there might be a difference. Uh, now we can also give the container a white color and it's pretty fitting already. Uh, we got booking and we got filter. Of course, they should look different. Uh, so we're going to do this in a second. Let's begin with the uh, touchable opacity because that button is actually going to be pretty easy. Um, so we're going to call this... What is it? Like it's a it's a filter button, right? Let's call this one filter button. Um, we need some styling for that filter button. Let's attach it here. Style styles.filter button. Uh, we definitely don't want to have just a text. Um, what we want is actually to have an Ionicon. So Ionicon's name, uh, I think this is options outline and a size of 24 okay yeah that's that's pretty close to it so the filter button should have um some padding okay then it also needs a border so border width of one 
border color, um, I'll use a grayish color. Actually, maybe we can use our own colors. I mean, that would make sense. Let's see. Yeah, I think that should work. And we need, of course, a border radius. Otherwise, we're just gonna have a big box here. Yep, I think that's it. Mm -hmm. That is our button. Uh, for the action row, I kind of already feel uh, we definitely need to align the items in the center. Yep. And what I want to do is I want to say uh, justify content. Uh, let's say space between. Then it puts everything as far to the sides as possible. Um, so I think that should look good. But additionally, what I want to give this is some padding horizontal. Um, yep, that makes it come together nicely. And I think we will need some padding bottom as well. So I'll just already give this. Um, we gotta have a scroll view below this one, um, below the action row. But for now, uh, that's that. Okay, we got the button. So now it's time to focus on this part here. So the where to button. Um, right now it only says booking. If you want to use the Expo Router link component around something, around attachable opacity or anything, what you want to do is you want to say as child. It's a very common pattern because otherwise your styling won't work. But by doing it like this, it should hopefully work. Okay, touchable opacity will definitely have some styling involved. And then we do have an icon and we have text. Okay. So first of all, let's call this one um, search button. Um, and the search button will go down here. So for our search button, we will use flex direction row again, because the left, uh, um, so because icon and then this, we split this out with flex row. Uh, let's see, we can probably already put in both parts required in our touchable opacity. So the first part should be an icon. Can you reuse Ionicons, name, search, uh, size 24. And the second part will be a view with text. So if we don't specify anything, it will use a column setup. Uh, and therefore, let's call this one where to. And then we had another text with anywhere, any week. And I always have this high dot or, or interpunct. I think that's what it's called. I, ne I need to copy this. I don't know where to find this on my keyboard. So not too bad. Uh, I think we just need to wrap some, some stuff around this. I will give this one here the font family. I will try and use our custom font family as much as possible. But if I forget it in some place, please, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, then just feel free to add it to text elements or wherever you feel fit for it. Okay, so this is everything we need. Now we just need to make it look like this. And I feel this is always an interesting exercise. I mean, we have the setup, which is already good with a flex layout. But now we need to make it look exactly like we want to. So let's go down. Um, and by the way, I think this could also need a different color. Let's just quickly do this. Colors.gray. Yeah, like this. Uh, let's see. Let's see what we can do for our search button. We have the flex direction row. Um, I certainly want to align the items in the center. So the uh, icon is aligned with uh, the text. I want to have some gap between the elements. So let's introduce a gap of 10. Let's add a border, um, border color of, do we want to use the same? Actually, I don't want to use the same gray. I want to use a really, really light gray. And I want to use a border with uh, the hairline with once again. Because if you closely inspect this, there is a super thin border around this. And of course there's a shadow, but there's also a super thin border around this. Um, let's also say that we have a certain shadow. So for a shadow, we could use an object like this with elevation, a shadow color, the opacity, the shadow radius and some offset. And oops, I added this. No, I actually added this in the right place, I think. Um, but this button, to see the shadow correctly, we need to assign a few more things, I think. First one is I want to give this a fixed width. Uh, let's use 200. 
Um, or 200, that's probably too small. 280, yeah, that looks good. I wonder if I gave this flex one. Um, that's probably too big. Um, okay, yeah, we got that gap. I think this could actually work as well. Let me try this out. Oh, I'm not sure if this works. But if we give some gap, then we don't need the fixed width. That could make things better. It could. I don't know if it will. Um, we also want to add some padding. So now it looks like this. I think we're getting pretty close. It actually also, by the way, you see it opens our modal as we... So if you could <laughs> then the first part of this tutorial correct, it should work. Um, I definitely want to have a big border radius of like 30. Um, and what I still don't see is my shadow. And as far as I know, it is always a problem if the view has no background color. So I will give it a background color of white now. And I hope... Yeah, that then the shadow comes actually out. Otherwise, you don't really see it. Um, but now I think we're pretty close to what this looks like. And we can just trigger it and it will open our model in a nice animated way. It does even better animation with like a shared element transition uh, in the official Airbnb app. I couldn't make this work yet. Maybe we're going to do this in the future. Maybe I'm going to do another video on uh, like shared element transitions once this becomes more stable from reanimated. Anyway, that's a good start. Um, what we need next is the horizontal scroll view below. So let's do this. Um, we're gonna figure out, so not the action row. The action row is like the first part of it and we're gonna now do the second part of that view. So we will use a scroll view and we wanna use it in a horizontal fashion. Okay. And to display something, I will map through the categories that we uh, added up uh, up there with item and index. And we're going to render something for every category. So for every category, I think uh, it's always like uh, I want to add a touchable, uh, touchable opacity. Can't you complete like the full name of a touchable opacity? I don't know why. What is what is your problem? Anyway, uh, the text for this will be item dot name. Okay, so you see, isn't that a great start? I <laughs> uh, love it. Okay, we, we should give it a key. I will use the index because in this list, the items won't change, the index won't change, so I can use it. Otherwise, if you can like reorder stuff in a list, don't use the index as the key. Uh, that's usually not a good idea. In my case, it will work. Um, this also needs an icon. So here I will use my material icons now. And for the material icon name, I will use uh, item.name. And this is now getting mad because uh, string is not assignable to these types. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, I could probably get icon props or something. Uh, for the name, some sort of type. In this case, I just know that like, yeah, whatever. And as any is a solution that you shouldn't use in, in many cases, but I will use it in here uh, as it <laughs> fixes this. Okay, of course it should be icon.icon .icon, um, in that name. So this is, it looks, isn't it pretty close to what we want? <laughs> almost, almost. Okay, um, definitely this one should have a bigger size. Uh, let's use 24 again for the size. Um, and then it gets a bit more complicated. So as you can see, there's a difference between an active item and an inactive. It is like gray and it has this little border down there. So we need to account for that. Uh, and we also need to style our scroll view uh, a bit. What I also don't want is for the scroll view to shows horizontal scroll indicator. I think it doesn't, uh, it won't, but I will still set it to false just in case. And then let's also give some styling to the inner uh, content container. What I wanna do is I wanna align the items in the center. Okay, uh, looks a tiny bit better. I wanna give some gap between the different items. Okay, and I wanna have some padding horizontal, just like we have in other places. So it's more aligned with what we got. Okay, good start so far. Um, now for the touchable opacity, um, I wanna keep track of the items. 
Uh, why? Because I will later also scroll to or focus a certain item. So let's do this. I want to start by using items ref and then use ref. That will give us a reference to that one. And that will actually be an array of touchable opacity items. Okay, that looks really scary, but it actually really isn't. Okay, so this is our items ref. And then we have an active index and set active index will use state and the active index will be zero. So that's the category that will be initially active. And that means we also need some styling. So we need styling for the active category and for the inactive category. Let's say category text and the category text. Uh, let's, let's see, let's do it like this. So the category text font size 14 font family, but this one has gray and if it is active, it is black. And same now for the whole button. The whole button has pretty much the same setup. So a categories button looks like this, flex one, align the items and some padding. But in the case of an active button, what we want to do additionally is we get it or give it a border at the bottom. And now let's see how we can attach these different four classes to our buttons. So, uh, first of all, the touchable opacity. Okay, you will get a reference, so we can later uh, access it correctly. And no, we actually, yeah, we get the ref, not the key, the ref. And that's interesting because we have an array. Usually you have like one reference for, you have a reference for a scroll view or a reference for a box. And in this case, we have an array of touchable opacities and we can do it like this, items ref dot current and index equals element. That's the way how we can keep track of the different, um, you got any problem with that? Um, let's see, okay, yeah, it's mad about something. I think that this could also, um, no, actually, uh, actually, yes. Actually, yes, that was just a, a typo, um, making sure that this works. All right, and now the more important part, so we're not really using the ref yet. The ref is only important for when we do like the focusing, but the style is important. If the active index is equal to the index of the iteration, in that case, we want to use styles dot active uh, categories button active, otherwise styles dot categories button and as a result it becomes like this so it's becoming in general styled but also it's getting the active border and of course i could change the state to like three and then this one would be active yes that also means at some point we need a function like select category uh, which will receive an index and then we're going to do some magic to focus that uh, we could probably just set like set active index index for the moment that should potentially work if we just assign this to our touchable opacity on press uh -huh. select category index is it index yep okay nice yeah that should work um but for the icon uh, and for the text, we want to use this switch as well of the style. So I will copy this. And for the material icon, I will set the color to, uh, yeah, active in, uh, now I copy, of course, everything. Active index equals index. In that case, I want to use the color uh, black if it is active. And if it is inactive, I will use colors.gray. Okay, you see all the other icons now become gray and we do the same thing for our text now. So if the active index is equal to the index, I will use category text active and category text. So now we do have it. Everything is gray that's not active. I found this on the web. Okay, yeah, thank you, Siri. <laughs> um, and we can focus something. What I want next is that when I click on cabins, it should scroll like this, okay? 
That is something I found in the uh, in, uh, Airbnb, not Instagram application. And I want to install one additional package, which is super important. <laughs> okay, this is the Hexbo Haptics plugin. Um, the Haptics is something that makes your device shake. So it is perfect for a video tutorial to show you how something shakes. It is impossible, basically, uh, at least until now. But I will still add it so you at home get the vibe of being right here in the video. Uh, and we're going to do it in here. So we're going to import uh, star as everything from haptics or as haptics and then in my select category at some point I can call haptics dot um, impact async and then haptics dot uh, impact feedback style and I can select you could try out different I would say light should probably be enough in this case but now it gets even funnier because I want to now get which element we clicked on. Remember, we have an index. We have 0, 1, 2. And I want to access the element from my items ref now. So the selected element is items ref dot current um, at index. This is the selected one. And then I will call selected dot measure. And that will give us the measurement of this item inside the view. So let's open this because this is actually returning a callback here. So what I want at this point is to call my uh, scroll ref. Oh, I don't have a scroll ref yet. Let's do this. Scroll ref equals use ref scroll view. Um, let's initialize this with null. And make sure you give the scroll ref to your scroll view in case we, I think we haven't done, yeah. Okay, so now I can call scroll ref current and I can scroll to, no, oh, come on, just, just accept it. Um, scroll to, and I can scroll to some coordinates. So I want to scroll to X, uh, Y should stay the same and it should be animated true. Okay, let's see. Uh, well, okay, it's not bad, but it's scrolling a bit too far. Actually, I want it like this. So let's reduce it by our 16 padding. And now, uh, okay, the list ends there. But let's say I'm going to do it like this. Yeah, that feels really good. And on a device, you, uh, I don't know if I get this, if I do like a reload here, um, I should certainly, I don't want to lock in. Yeah, I get the haptics feedback, definitely. That feels good. It's just like giving the user a bit of feedback about what's going on. I also kind of feel like these things should have even more padding between them. Um, is it the gap? I think it's the gap here. Let's use a gap of 30. Yeah, I kind of feel that's even better. I don't know why, uh, but I think that should be good. Now. In a regular case, this will also update the list. We won't really do an actual update, but I want to show you something, um, how we can do this and also, by the way, introduce then some animations. So that means if we look at our setup, we do have the Explore header here in the index page and probably we have listings here. So we need to tell from the Explore header a whole listings page, hey, please update uh, or we have some new parameters, something like that. So in order to not make this too ugly, uh, we're gonna introduce some props here. So interface defined as well for our explore header and we we'll call this on category changed. And this will have category and void. So I will now tell my explore header that it will get this. So we can destructure this already from props. And when the category changes, so when we select a category, I will just call on category, I knew it, category, category, category. On category changed will be called with categories at index dot name. So I'll just pass like the name up. Uh, isn't really too important. Now the index page should turn red because we don't implement anything yet here. So let's do this. I will call this on data changed. Um, so we can handle this now and do whatever we want to do with that category data. In my case, I will actually pass it uh, on 
Now let's see, on category changed, we'll call on data changed here. Uh, I will add a lock to do see that the data is coming through. Changed and category. Okay, let's see, uh, here we go. I press city, beachfront, countryside. Okay, so we are able to get the changes. This is like basic React stuff, but I feel it's good to um, not only do React Native and be too focused on like the view or this or that. No, we want to do like everything. That means we have the, categ the selected category. Now, um, I want to keep track of the category. So I will say uh, const category set category. And then I want to spell this correctly this time. Category set category. Uh, and I will call use state. Uh, I will just set this to tiny homes because I know this is like my first category. Okay. And now when we implement the listings page, we will catch that as well. Um, on the listings page, I will start because this is coming up next as anyway, interface props. And this will not only get an array of listings, so we'll get like the listings data as an array, but it will also get the category, all right? So that means we're able to then destructure this here, listings category from the props and index turns red because, well, it's expecting something for that. Uh, let's set listings to an empty array for the second and category to my state, which is category. And now category changes and listings will change at the same time. And we can see this in here by simply adding a use effect block. And within that use effect block, I will add a dependency to category. Um, and that means I can now add a lock here and say reload listings. And now we've come full circle. I can click here and we see changed play, uh, changed city, changed beachfront. Actually, uh, uh, actually, this is not yet working. Are we getting the right category? Uh, category from the category props. Uh, is it saying reload listings? No, it's not. It certainly should, I hit save. <laughs> change to cabins, change to trending, change to play, but no reload listings. Um, Where did we go wrong? We got this, oh, we're not calling <laughs> set category here. Yeah, we should probably update our state with a new category. And I will now also remove that lock, which is just trolling me and now Reload listings, reload listings. So whenever we click something, we want to reload the listings. And I think this is a nice example of how we can manage the data flow in our React application and not just go from the explore header straight to listings. Going from child to child is usually a bad idea. You usually want to go through your parent and the parent can then handle the update of the child. Um, that is just a pattern that you should understand and that usually makes your React Native or in general your React applications better. Okay, the header is I think pretty much done. Um, the only problem I see right now is that we should have on this page some margin. Um, where's the index page? Because I think there should be a text behind this. Let's see. Uh, let's add a margin top of, I don't know, like 200. Yeah, then our listing appears. Um, we will change this to something else in the end. Uh, for now, I will just make it so that we see the listings uh, in here. Again, don't worry, we're gonna touch this again later. For the moment, we just wanna make sure that we can pass some items to this page. And we do this by getting some fake Airbnb data. So I found this page inside Airbnb uh, where we can get some data and I also found this public open data soft page. So on this page I picked from a list uh, Germany and Berlin. So you can pick whatever you want, what's closest to you, whatever you find interesting. That should give you a list and you can export this as a JSON. I would recommend you don't go too crazy. Just pick something or you can even remove lines. It's not too important. We just want to have some data. 
And from the other page of Inside Airbnb, I also got the GeoJSON data, which is a GeoJSON file, uh, which we will later use for a map implementation, okay? So for now, let's see, under assets, I will create a new folder data and into data, I will put my uh, listings and my geodata. So listings will look somewhat like this, scraping URL, some information. We will just use a fraction of that information. Uh, however, it won't hurt. Um, so let's see where we can load that. Uh, we're still on the index page. So on the index page, I want to load my listings data from assets, Airbnb listings. And then I think I can memorize these items that could, I'm not entirely sure, but I think it should give us a little uh, boost. So when this page is recreated uh, or when it reloads, it memorizes the data. So use memo and then you listings data as any empty dependencies. And then I will be able to pass the items down here to the listings page. And on the listings page, uh, let's see, let's say listings.length. And I should see, yes, we have 666 listings that can and that we now will display. Okay, let's display some data. As a quick reminder, this is the Airbnb page. We have done this down here, which is the tab bar, and we've done this up here, which is the header area, which leaves us with the main part of that screen. And on that part, we're gonna have these pages, and we will also have the details page. So we will actually do two things. We're gonna do the list implementation here, and we're gonna follow that up by also doing the implementation of the details page, which powers a parallax header here at the top. So we're gonna see this looks a bit different, but from one screen, clicking on this, we will get here and clicking here will get us back here. Pretty simple list details pattern. Let's do this. Um, we have our page. We have the listings page, which is a component that renders currently everything uh, on this page. So what we wanna do is we have tons of listings. We wanna wrap this um, within a component. We're gonna wrap this in a flat list. We can also, or we could also use a flash list, which would probably be even faster. But for our case, I think the flat list component from React Native should be just fine. Additionally, I want to set some style here and for that I will use my default styles.container. Now the flat list needs data. The flat list needs data, so let's pass it in. And we might have at some point a loading state. Do we really want to care about that? Yeah, let's care about that. I, I care about it, so let's do it. Uh, we will add const loading set loading. Do, 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 use state false because in the in the beginning initially we are not loading yet we will however reload here so actually we can implement that uh, I will call set loading to true and then, <laughs> with the ugliest way because we're not really doing any backend calls in here I will just use a set timeout yeah you can hate me for that but we're doing a UI clone we're not really developing the Airbnb app anyway so we will do a timeout of let's say 200 milliseconds and after that I want to set my loading to false again so this ties into the uh, logic of changing our category here uh, we previously had that okay back here in case we are loading Mm, I will display an empty array and otherwise use my items or my uh, listings. Um, why my items? Why, why should I call this items? Um, actually, I will remap this to items. I don't know why, but I feel like uh, I, I had a problem with listings. So I <laughs> will use items instead. Okay. Uh, we also might want to have a reference to my list. Uh, why do we need a lift ref? Well, then we can scroll it as well. So let's add a const list ref. Oh, it's getting late today. Simon is making more typos. We're going to continue tomorrow. 
Now we're gonna get this done. So use ref uh, flat list, and then I will set this to null initially, and then use the ref here, which is the list ref. So that will help us to scroll the list from code later. Finally, I need a render function. I need a render item function. And usually I will extract this into its own function. That's just good, um, good practice. I will call this render row and this row will get a list render item. I don't have any typings for my item, so it's going to be any, but we can just structure that and extract the actual item from it and then render our component, whatever it might be. Uh, it will definitely be wrapped in a link component and for the href we can now construct a dynamic link using template literals and I will go to slash uh, Where do I want to actually go? Um, slash listing uh, slash ID slash listing slash ID and the ID would be item dot ID I guess and I will just say go there. Okay. And if I now pass render row in here for our render function, we should see a list of 600 elements to go to a page. And that should also render a uh, lock out the ID of that page where we go. Isn't that a great start? <laughs> what a great success. And we also got great performance here. So it worked good. Okay. Um, of course, that's not everything, but uh, for now that should be fine. Uh, let's continue in here. So we want to create this side of setup, which means we have an image, we have some text, we have the stars, um, and we have the price. It's actually not too complicated what we want to achieve in here. But to make the whole thing clickable or look better, I will wrap it once again in a touchable opacity from React Native and then put a view in here. And uh, do we want to do this now? Mm, no, let's leave this a bit a bit later. So I will try now to use, let's try, what is it, React Native style? Oh, I feel so good about creating this one. This is the first time you see me live using that snippet. That is a great success. Now, if style sheet would also be added as an import automatically, I would thank that extension even more. I would send a handwritten letter to the creator of that extension. Huh, anyway. Uh, let's start with some padding and let's attach that here. Styles dot listing. Okay, way too many brackets and additional characters that I did not want to have in here. Okay, that's better. Now, the first part is the image. So let's use a React Native image and for the source we can use the URI. And in the listing, now we need to get into our fake data. Uh, there it is. In it, there should be a medium URL. We have an XL picture URL, but for that list, I feel like, yeah, we want to use the medium URL. That's what I want to use. URI should be item done. And we could have extracted the type for something. Hmm. Hmm. Do we want to do that? I could feel a bit better eventually. I don't really need it a lot, but let's let's try. So if I would go, do I have like a, uh, we only have the listing so far. So I do have an extension here, um, which can do TypeScript, something like JSON to TS convert from clipboard. Okay, selected string is not a valid JSON. Um, I feel like it is, but sometimes the extension tells me it's not. Um, uh, JSON to TS, okay, now we get it. Um, I will put this, yeah, I will put this somewhere. Let's put this somewhere, but then we have nice uh, completion of the different elements that would just make our life a bit easier. Um, yeah, probably we're just gonna do another folder interfaces up here. Interfaces, um, then we have listing.ts, I'm gonna put in export interface listing. And then we can also affect this and say, this is of the type listing. <clears throat> and now, <clears throat> sorry, da -da 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 -da. we have code completion. 
that feels a lot better. That feels a lot better to me. Okay, let's hit save here. And we should see that we don't have an image yet, simply because we haven't attached any styling to that image. And that usually means the image won't render. So let's do styles.image. Uh, okay, image. <clears throat> and the image here will get a width of 100. Yeah, uh, phone, it's cool, you're cool. You don't need to tell me about all of that. Um, and a height of mm, 300. Okay, that should render the images. That should render the images. <laughs> Where's my image? You should render now in here. Uh, but the listing does not have any width, but it shouldn't, that shouldn't be, oh yeah, that's the classic problem if you use the Expo Router link and use some components inside you want to add as child. Otherwise, everything's messed up. Add that and everything's fine. Okay, here we go. The most beautiful apartments in Berlin. Certainly not. <laughs> and uh, we're not filtering out those who don't have an image. You probably want to do that, but I just want to use the data in the easiest possible way. So here we go. We got our image. And to that image, I will also add a border radius of, uh, let's say, 10 to give the images rounded borders. So I can also click this and go to the details page. Good, good starting point. Um, then we have this touchable, uh, this icon up here. Let's, for fakey reasons, also add that. Uh, we can do this with an absolute place, I think. Uh, we can just do like a touchable opacity, uh, style, position, absolute. And the absolute position here is in reference to the container. So that is the parent. So it's kind of relative parent. I want to put this uh, like 30 from the right and 30 from the top. Okay. And then within I will do the Ionicons name, heart, outline, size 24, color, mm, simple black for now. Yeah, no. Okay, that should show a little heart up here. You could also fill that probably with a nice little background. But then we need like a vector or something. Yeah, that's like the easiest way of adding it. Now, additionally, we need some information below the image. Let's put that in another view and let's add its own styling. Um, so the first part is the name and the stars, which is actually aligned, which means we have a row. Okay, we have a flex direction row. Okay, and with that flex direction, we have our text component, which is item dot name. Yeah, cool. Now we should be able to already get this. Cool, cool. Um, and next to the item name, uh, we have the icon. We have an icon and the rating. Um, which means we do have, uh, this is kind of challenging. Mm. So we also have something below it. Uh, let's see, let's do another view here. Mm -hmm. Another view component style. Uh, we need to define that in a second. But what we want to render inside is Ionicon's name star and a size of 16. Um, star, not start. And then after that, we have the rating. That means this view, which groups together these elements, also needs flex direction rule. Okay. And then we have text, which is item dot there is some kind of review scores i will just use review scores rating and review scores rating is like 96 99 99 and i want to map this to a value between one and i think five or so so i will divide this by 20. <laughs> i guess airbnb is also doing the same isn't it all right, um, let's try and use our fun family. Uh, for this one, I will use mon as B, semi bold. And we're gonna have space between. So we wanna have space between the actual title here, which by the way, 
uh, should use something like uppercase, let's say style um, font size 16 and this, and then there should be space between just like before. So we're gonna add this up here uh, with justify content space between, and that should put our star rating always towards the end. Good. Um, do we need like a bit of padding here and there? I kind of feel like this this text and everything that we do here should have uh, some padding. The image does not have uh, padding. Maybe the listing could just have gap. Listing. Listing gap of 10. Yeah, that's better. And maybe between the actual entries. So that should be margin vertical. Uh, let's use 16. So then we have a bit bigger gap between the actual um, listings or the rooms or whatever you want to call it. Okay, that looks good. Um, only our star rating could also need some, some gap here. So let's add a gap of four between the star and the rating. And then I think it looks pretty legit so far. Uh, okay, yeah, I think that's good. Now let's do the next one, which is below that view here. So you need to be careful. Let's put the item room below it with, uh, again, it's just using the default uh, gap. And then we will add another simple block. So let me just bring this in, uh, which is using a row layout to display the price and night. So I think by now we've learned what flex direction row means. It aligns it like this. Otherwise, if we have the default flex layout, it just puts one element below each other. Um, with that in place, we oops, have kind of finished this list, right? Um, but we also want to do some cool animations. Um, and therefore, it is now time to add reanimated. I wanted to do this in the beginning, but it kind of didn't fail, right? Because we only use it now. So, NPX Expo install React Native reanimated. We're just going to do some basics with reanimated. I have a full course on using reanimated with React Native on Galaxy.dev, so go check that out if you're interested in more. To set it up, we need to head over to my uh, Babel config. And within the Babel config, we're going to add one more line down here. And now we will also kill the server here and restart it with dash C to clear the project. If you don't do this, the whole world will crash upon you and nothing will work. I can promise you, no. But really, you're gonna do this, otherwise you're gonna have problem, reanimated won't work correctly. And I hope it works now correctly, otherwise the, my, my whole point here would be proven wrong. Okay, um, what I wanna show you is that when we switch to tiny homes, to cabins, you see, there's a little loading. That is here our loading fakey with the 200 milliseconds delay. What we want to do is we want to animate the appearance of that. And we can do this with very, very simple techniques from reanimated. So to my listing, I will put animated.view in front. And I'm going to add this, not from React Native. This is now important. So I want to import animated. Um, oh, come on, you can't do this. <sighs> it's 2023, I'm writing my animated import by hand. Uh, Reanimated. Okay, whatever. So now this view is a reanimated object and we can put in cool things. We can do a lot, but the easiest thing is I want to have an entering animation and I will use one of the pre-made solutions, which is for example, fade in right. And I will also have an exiting one and this will use fade out left. As a result, notice, if I change this, the elements will move out and the next thing will fade in. And we got this nice cool, we could also check like if we go to the left or the right of a category, we could probably improve this and make it feel even better. So in this case, it worked good. But if I go left, I kind of feel that it should work out to the other hand, uh, the other side. But anyway, I just want to show you this, that uh, we can get 
some animations going on, some loading states, some transitions really, really easily uh, with reanimated. And actually, we will embrace reanimated even more now on the next page because da -da 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 -da, now it's time to do this. Uh, I don't have coffee. I have a bit of tea anymore. Oh, super cold, super cold. Cannot recommend. Um, this is what we want to do. Um, the basic page is not too hard to set up. Um, maybe this header area a tiny bit, but especially this image component will be challenging as it's going to be a parallax header. But I think we're going to start with the basics of that page. So let's get into the, uh, where is it? App listing ID page. On that page, we are able to get the ID already. And we can now get the um, actual element that we want to display by first importing the data and then filtering our uh, stuff by using it as an array and then finding the item where the ID is equal to our ID because we don't really have a back end. And so this is what we do. Um, we will also affect how our header looks. Um, where do we want to start? Do we want to start with the header component or do we want to start somewhere else? I feel like uh, we should start with the general page setup. So let's say style equals and Simon's favorite snippet react native style sheet comes into play. Okay, import edit up here and then the good old container. In this case, the container will have flex one and a background color of white. Okay, and then we do as always styles.container. And remember, this is the page we're talking about now. Um, did we do any special setup here in the layout for that page yet? Uh, we set the header title to be blank. I think that's a good starting point. Uh, we probably don't really need a whole lot more next to that, but I kind of want to set the header to transparent as well. And we can do this in here as well. So header transparent, true. Okay. What happens now is that we don't really have any header anymore. Is that a good idea? So I'm mean, maybe for the development right now, it's not a good idea for the final UI. Yes, it is a good idea, but right now it is probably not. Um, I will put my stuff here on this page now in a scroll view. And I kind of know that I will animate this later. So I will already add an animated dot scroll view. Um, there's no problem in using this without actually using some sort of animation. So that should be uh, no big deal. What we want to do is certainly we want to close this and within I will start with an image. Um, do I want to animate this as well? I think yeah. Let's do an animated image. Uh, source will be um, Yuri listing dot ah. Uh, this is of the type listing. Can we do this? Like we do have the code completion. Yeah, we can. Of course we can. Okay, let's use the big picture in here. Mm, and we can directly close that and it should render. Mm, okay, yeah, we have no styles yet. Yeah, that's that's fair enough. So let's do some styles for the image. Uh, styles dot image. And the image styling will use the full uh, well, let's, let's define it. I think we need to, um, I think we need to use a const because we need to use it in other places later. So let's use for the hate a const up here and then put in hate. Uh, that is our image hate. And then for the width, I will just use the width of our window and we can get this so we can get the width here. If I don't add a typo by extracting it from dimensions dot get uh, and then using window. So this will give us the current width and that will be used in here. Actually, can we do it in the short form? Oh yeah, we can. And voila, there we have it. 
uh, what a beautiful image. And we can also do this because we are in a scroll view environment. Now, as we have this, I can also confidently say header transparent true because now it renders like this and we're able to affect my header component. Do we first want to affect the header component or create an info container? Uh, I, uh, I think we're going to do the info container because it's really quite boring. And I think I will just bring this in again. You can find the code on GitHub, but this is just a bunch of views and text elements that is not really interesting. And I know you want to implement the parallax scroll, which is really, really interesting. So we're going to go through this in a second. First, I will add vector icons. Then you see a lot of styling is missing. Um, and then the image component is mad, but we do have image, don't we? Uh, we have an animated image. Probably we don't have the image yet. Oh, we added animated from React Native. We don't want to do that. Please don't. We want animated from reanimated. That's where it's coming from. That's where the good stuff is coming from. Now, the only thing missing is a lot of styling. And as I said, so we have an info container. We have a name. We have a location. We have rooms. Uh, we have ratings, we have a divider, we have a host and a host view. So all of this is really quite uninteresting. Let's put this down here. So uh, as you said, just padding, background color, font families, font sizes. It's not too impressive to show off these things. Uh, it's not like you, you can't do some styling. So I just want to scroll it through really slowly and mention that you can find it on GitHub. Uh, what's missing here for this is currently only the description. And honestly, I can't see this description myself. <laughs> the description, I'll put it in here. So this is it. This is a scroll view with a bunch of information. But honestly, it is just using different sizes, using padding, using flex layout, um, using two little dividers in the center, which is our divider view, again, using the hairline width, and then rendering the text for the description. Really, there's nothing, nothing fancy about this. Fancy is only the uh, reanimated stuff that we're gonna do in a second. And additionally, there's also a footer area. As you can see down here, and of course we want to do that as well. Uh, why not? Why not? So let's do another view. Mm, we're going to do it. Who? the way do we want to put this? I think we're going to put it into... No, we're going to put it behind the animated scroll view. And I'm going to make this an animated view in case as well. Um, the style will be mm, default styles. Did we add that? That is a question now. Did we, we added this? So I can remember we did this and I'm making this an animated view so it can enter and it will slide in down with a tiny delay of 200 milliseconds. Okay, that's going to look somewhat fancy. Actually, if I don't put anything inside, yeah, um, this is now perfect. If we work on the bottom, I should always put it here and do it like this. We will get back there, just doing it for the footer right now. Um, so let's try and go there again. And you see, after a little delay, it slides up and that's what we wanted to do. Now, of course, there should be some content inside. So I will put in a view um, with some styling. Again, this will most likely be a flex layout uh, with a row and probably space between. So let's do this flex direction row uh, justify content with space between and then eventually we should also align the items in the center. Okay, and then we're going to have two parts here. Um, we're going to have that first part uh, which you can click on and then we're going to have the button. The button is actually going to be the, the default button. I'm uh, just putting it here so we can see it as a reference. Uh, the first part, let, let's use a touchable opacity just like just for fun. Touchable opacity. 
um, style. I think, do we have something for that? No, we don't. We, we should have like a footer text. Um, and then we'll say night and also the price. So there should be a style. Uh, what is the style? Mm, footer price. Styles dot footer price. And then that should be like Euro um, listing. Where's my data? Listing dot mm, price. Yeah, that's it. So now I just need footer text and footer price. And again, let's just put it down here. Uh, 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 here. Okay, uh, the photo text will use the full height. Oh, I messed up something in the view. Did I put like, again, uh, text somewhere where I should not put text? Um, text, <laughs> oh, my favorite bug. Uh, it's not a bug, it's, it's a like, yeah. Okay, 45 euros. <laughs> but didn't I use like another text element here? I felt like I, I was using a text element for a night. Okay, 45 euros per night. That's what I wanted to say. Um, and then within our, or next to the touchable opacity, so we can embrace the justify content space between, we're gonna have another touchable opacity. This one has the default styling. So this is going to be this red button, which we used before. So we can use our default styles dot button in here um, and close this. And then we also know that for the style, we should also have like a default style dot button text and that will say reserve. Okay, great button, that looks good. Uh, only thing is I wanna add some more padding. So I will do this here in that array. Now we'll add padding, um, padding horizontal of 20. Okay, that button looks a bit better now. Um, additionally, there's something missing here, isn't it? Um, well, I think we can. I think we can live with that. Uh, we have the space between. We have the footer text. We have the footer price. We have the button text. Um, and I think it looks quite nice. I mean, it could. To use a bit more delay or come in more slowly, we can also affect that. But so far, I think it makes a view just, it gives something to that view and it makes it a bit more special. Talking about special, let's do this. Let's do this up here. The idea of a parallax header is that basically this image is in the background and the text here or everything starting from the white part here. So this here is basically on a different level than this. And if I scroll this up here, this here slows a bit slower, which gives the effect that this moves on top of this and the other thing just scrolls out slowly. It's hard to describe and certainly my painting did not help <laughs> to underline my point here, um, but we're gonna do this. Um, but one thing I noticed is that this scroll view here has a problem at the bottom, so, Going back to my animated scroll view, I will now set the content, uh, no, the content contain, hello, what's your problem? Hello, what, what, what is the problem with my animated scroll view? Mm, do, are we, are we still friends or? Um, we, we're not really friends, I feel. Uh, let's see, we did animated from, we do have animated from react native reanimated. Yeah, we do. And we have an animated dot scroll view. Um, I don't know which, which, which part right now is breaking my styling. Um, <laughs> what is this? Okay. Let, let's start easy with a scroll ref. Um, everything that we do now is with reanimated. So we're gonna have to consider that as our scroll ref is not just a ref, but we're gonna have to use use animated ref instead. And then we're gonna have animated dot scroll view. And then we can attach this to our scroll view because we're gonna need that. 
Um, additionally, as I said, I would really like to use content container. What is your problem with content container style? Why am I not getting code completion on that? I don't know, but I wanted to give this 100 padding at the bottom because we have our absolute view on top of it. So we're going to calculate that in as well. That was just what I wanted to. Now I want to get the events from the scroll view. And the first part to do so is tell it to use scroll event throttle. Why am I not getting any kind of code completion? Something in here is definitely off and I can't tell what. It's probably because I initially imported something wrong. Let's open it again. Um, scroll event throttle. Uh, that should be set to 16. So we get 16 uh, events per second. Now, with reanimated, we can use a cool feature called use scroll view offset, which makes it a lot easier to get the offset of the scroll view. And that's what we need to implement our uh, functionality. So use scroll view offset can be used and that would just give us the latest value and we just need to pass in our scroll ref like this. Okay. And then we have use scroll view offset. Cool. Now we're going to create some uh, styling that's dependent on this offset. And we're going to then attach that styling to both the image and also to our header area. Let's start with the image. So const image animated style equals use animated style. That's required if we want to do any kind of additional or specific styling using reanimated for our components. And I will attach this animated styling to my image actually. So down here I will use an array. And I will also now use the image animated style. Uh, why is this red? I guess because we're not returning anything yet. So let's return something. Okay, now it becomes happy. What we want to do in here is we want to transform this image. So let's add transform and open up an array. And now things get more complicated. So we want to use an interpolation here. So we will call translate y moving it along the y coordinate. Um, we're going to use the interpolate function from React Native reanimated to basically map the values to a different range. Uh, so our value is the scroll set of a value here. Uh, we're dependent on that. And now we have the input and the output numbers. So our input ranges from minus image height going to zero and then to image height. Um, and then the output will be mapped to minus image height divided by two. So we will scroll less than the actual image height. Uh, the middle will still be zero. And then we also can use a bit of over scroll. So on iOS, you can actually over scroll. Like if I pull this down, the scale becomes uh, also a bit bigger. So I will use 0 0.75 in here. Let's see what this changes. This is actually almost the whole part of the magic here. You see, the image transforms. It's now moving out slowly. I could change this to divided by four, so it will go out even slower. Uh, okay, and so far I can go here. That's actually not changing anything. Um, oh yeah, we haven't added the scale. So let's add the scale. Um, we can add another block in here and say scale. And I want to interpolate again using the scroll offset dot value. And I will interpolate this to minus image height, zero image height. And uh, the output numbers will be two, one, one. So now if I go here, it actually scales bigger, but it's not scaling uh, below the default value. And with that, <laughs> we have almost implemented like only with these lines we have in, in the scroll offset, we have implemented a parallax scroll and it works just smooth because it's using reanimated and native stuff. 
Like, it, I've been looking for a parallax header and uh, look for different packages and none didn't really work for me. And then I did it with reanimated and it was that easy. It's unbelievable. It, it drove me crazy. Um, yeah, I really, I could play around with this now for the next two hours of this video, but that's not giving you a lot of uh, <laughs> benefit. So what we also want to do is talk about this header area here. So let me implement that header area in here. We have done a bit in the layout where we said header transparent to true, but we can also do some more setup in here. Let's add a use layout effect, which is called when this uh, page is rendered. And I will add an empty dependency array so we don't have like something going on all the time. And I will now add navigation, use navigation from Expo Router to directly access the navigation object. And on the navigation object, I can now do pretty much the same like we could do with stack screen as we've done before. I could set the option. So header title and header transparent is already set. Um, I will now also set uh, the header right button. So header right will be another button. Uh, actually header right are two buttons. So we're going to do a little, uh, style styles dot bar. Do we already have that one? Nope, we don't. Um, so for the bar, we're going to have a flex direction again, going to go down here, flex direction row and align the items, the same setup like we had before. Um, and then we're just going to put in two touchable opacities, touchable opacity, um, style. This one should be like a round button, a round button. I guess we don't have that styling yet. Uh, on press, I can do like a, a share functionality if we want to. So cons share listing. That's actually something we can probably implement. So share listing will be called on press and round button, uh, that should be fairly easy to do as well. We're just going to give it a uh, fixed width and height of 40 and a border radius of 50, uh, white background, and then you pretty much always have a rounded button. Um, so now if I close this, what is the icon that we need for this one? Uh, I think that's share outline, right? Um, there we go, there we go. Okay, perfect, first one. Um, to share that, we can actually use share from React Native. I just uh, found this to be really easy. I tried to use an expo package, but you can do it just like this. And you can just add share from React Native. So then if you were on this page, you could immediately share this. Just want to do a little, little something, a little real functionality uh, once in a while. Additionally, next to this button, we're going to put another button. So we're going to have this and the heart button. We will not really use the heart button. Do they have like a shadow? I can't exactly see it. They probably, they might have a hairline with, um, they might have a hairline uh, uh, thing going on. Let's say border with style sheet dot hairline with. Um, and let's say the border, co oh, come on. Uh, border color is colors colors dot gray. Yeah, I think they have something like this going on. Let's keep it like this. Um, I also see that this is blue. I certainly don't want to have it like that. So instead of using um, header right, we can also target header left and just make it another round button, which will then use our navigation to go back and manually use the functionality. Okay, this is pretty cool. We have the transparent header, but there's one more thing I want to do. And that is, if I scroll down that page, I want to actually make the header white at some point. You're going to see this in the official application as well. You scroll down and it's a nice header effect you're going to see in a lot of apps. I actually want to do a video just on header animations. So what we do is for the header background, and I don't know why I can't get good code completion today. Um, for the header background, I will add my own animated view, animated dot view. And that animated view will have a styling. Actually, we can just close it immediately. There's no content inside. Um, and the style here will be um, an array of styles. 
Um, so styles.header will be some, some default styling. Um, so what I want to use by default is the following. Um, let's see. Header, we got this. Background color of white. And that's <laughs> kind of strange. Why do I want to use header background color of white? Didn't we just say like we want to have nothing in the background? Yeah, that's true. But wait, wait with me. So we're doing it like this. Uh, and then we're going to have a border bottom color of colors dot gray and for the border width we're going to reuse the hairline width okay so this is how it should look like here but it's not how it should look like here and this is what we're going to use reanimated once again so we're creating another animated styling object and we're going to call this header animated style again use animated style and then uh, we can do our function again and we return something and this time it will not work with transform or scale but we're working with opacity so if i would just return an opacity of zero here and use this header animated style um here <laughs> um okay let's probably reload that page okay then we see we have no opacity up here. So that means the opacity here is overwriting our the rest of our styling. Or actually we're not overwriting, we're not setting opacity anywhere else. It is still white, the opacity is just zero. But we will make this now dependent again on our scroll percentage. So we're gonna interpolate the values again of scroll offset dot value. And we're gonna map these from the range of minus image height to zero to image height. So that is the input range. And the output range will be between zero and one. So between the full height, we're gonna have uh, opacity one or zero. And now let's see what happens. If I go, or oh, probably we're gonna have to reload this. No, this is not what I, well, that's interesting, certainly. Uh, <laughs> but not exactly what I wanted. Uh, we also have three values that can't be right. Uh, we have be to be between, the input should be between zero and image height times two because around here is where the opacity should be one. So in that range from zero, the opacity is zero. And if we arrive at image height divided by two, the opacity should be one. So let's see who you see this. Mm, so smooth, so smooth, mm, and it's so easy. Um, actually, I feel like two is too much. Let's do 1.5. Yeah, that's perfect. It's perfect. It's exactly when they match. Ah, oh, it's so good. Unbelievable. <laughs> this is how you see. This is how you need to celebrate the small wins in your applications. Like we've done a lot in this application. Give you a little. Give a little hands up in a moment of appreciation for all the things you have developed. Now, we have done this cool page with reanimated and now we have more reanimated in here, which is really impressive. Like if you do this and show it to your boss, he will say, oh, this is really native. Is this React Native? Yeah, it is, it actually is. This is not native iOS. Uh, and I've done this. Um, you don't have to tell him you watched my videos, but I mean, you could. They could probably pay for a subscription to Galaxy. So tell your boss that you need that as well. But anyway, um, just getting too overly excited. Um, just want to make sure that we don't add the import here. Uh, it comes from React Native Reanimated. I don't know why that import went wrong. But I think we covered pretty much everything that was to be done on this page. Um, we have this header area with the enter and exit animation, which I think does usually work. Um, and we also have this epic header here, which I will certainly do another single component or another tutorial on as it's that easy with reanimated. Good. That was a big chunk of this project um, after all the setup and authentication, but there's a lot more. So in the next part, we're going to focus on using a map, using clusters, and then doing something fun with the bottom sheet.
Alright, so it's time to talk about maps. Because the Airbnb application has a map, uh, we have this default list view, yes, but that can actually be slided down into this kind of card or this bottom sheet, which we will actually work on in the next section. So not this section, the, the one after this. But what we want to focus on now is this, the map view. And this should be basically displayed behind what we currently have. So for our testing, we will just uh, hide this and instead develop the map. And within that map, we see that we have, yes, a map view, but we also have this here. We have clusters. And that's not included in the default map, but we're going to use an additional package so we can also display clusters on our map. So let's do this. Um, we can get started by, first of all, adding the actual maps package. Uh, so let's go here. Let's clean this up and go ahead with npx expo install react native maps. Uh, once we got that, so you can look also at the, uh, oh, that was perfect English. Uh, you can also look at the, uh, at the map view here, um, which is a pretty easy implementation. Just put in the map into your view and make it expand to the full view. That's all we need. So let's do this, um, but I would recommend we do this in a new component. So let's do a new file. I will call this listings, uh, listings map.tsx. Let's do a listings map in here. And then we can import our map view and actually we should display the listings map. Um, I think the index was our place. Yeah, so let's comment out the listing stuff here. And let's instead use the listings map. The listings map will need the listings as well, but in this case, uh, I want to use the geo data. So let's use listings data geo. And that will be, I'm actually not completely sure what the difference is between these two. They kind of look the same. Um, honestly, I mean, I mean, this is a geometry thing here. Uh, with some coordinates. So maybe there is something different to it. Maybe. Uh, so remember, that is the data I took from this explorer we had in the previous part uh, where we could extract that data. So the name is here dot geo dot json. Geo dot json. Okay. Yeah, of course I made the dot in the wrong place. Listings data geo will be uh, here. There will be dragons. Uh, we haven't defined the props yet. So let's do this. Um, type, I think we can just use, uh, yeah, we can use, I think we can actually use type as well. But uh, let's do props. <laughs> I would like to have copilot in some cases. Um, that would be really cool. Mm, and then we got our listings here from props. Okay. Uh, listings does not, listings, there we go. So now we should see the listings map appear here. Good. Uh, of course, we haven't done the actual map yet. That comes now. Um, so let's maybe take what Expo gave us here. Some styling. And let's just see where this takes us. Uh, we're going to add the import up here for the style sheet. We have a container. Map should spend the whole view. And voila, there we are. Focused in the center of Germany. Oh, what was that? I pressed the key and everything disappeared. <laughs> that was strange. Um, here we go. This is the map. On that map, we need to do cool things. We can zoom, we can scroll. So uh, as I'm using the iOS simulator, this is using Apple Maps. You can also use Google Maps. One additional note up front. Um, I have a full course on using maps with React Native on Galaxies because in the end, you need to take some additional steps if you want to deploy this. So this is using some dummy um, Expo SDK uh, keys, but if you want to deploy this with Google, um, you're gonna have to create an API key for iOS You also if you want to use Google Maps for iOS, you also have to do that with a key So there's a bit more of configuration. Just want to let you notice <coughs> Up front so you don't think oh, I just have a map and I can deploy this. No, it's it's not as easy as that anyway what we want to do now is, um, actually we can use my default styling for the container as well. Let's use default styles.container. Should be pretty much the same in this case. And we can now play around with our map. Actually, I, I used it a bit different before, but let's try. Let's try first of all, show, um, show or shows? Shows user location. Okay, this locates me in the center of Germany. 
not completely accurate, but anyway, it's okay. Um, and then it should also give us a shows my location button. Mm, let's see, I might have to, oh, this is maybe, let's see, let's do a reload. Um, it looks like the shows my location button only works if I use the Google Maps provider. Let's see, we can switch this, we can switch the provider and we can use um, instead the provider Google instead of the default provider. That can cause some issues, but uh, we're lucky it works. And what I want to show you is that now I have this button down here. Is my head still? I'm putting it here. Now we have this button to locate myself. We will zoom in and put me in the middle of nowhere. Mm, this is not where I live. But anyway, that's the position of, uh, I think, the simulator. And within the simulator uh, on iOS or on a Mac, you can actually um, open up, where is it, like... In the top bar, you're gonna find somewhere a place to set your location. Yeah, it's under features, location, and then you can set a custom location. And then you can set this to a specific latitude or longitude. So in my case, I use these values, which probably put me here. Although it sounds, I don't think those were the German coordinates. But anyway, um, we have now the basic for a map. And as I have data in Berlin for our um, markers, I will just stay here, but if you use different geodata for this, for example, you use Paris, then I will recommend you uh, center your map on Paris. What you can do as well is you can use an initial region. So uh, we've seen, if I now reload this, I'm like somewhere in, in Europe. I don't know actually how it focuses. But I can set up an initial region and I can pass that initial region in here as well. So I can use this initial region which would then focus on San Francisco. This is certainly not where I wanted to focus. <laughs> Why am I now in San Francisco? Um, where does this come from? I wanted to be in, in Germany somewhere. Is this really like my initial region? Hmm, strange. Okay, but anyway, we, you see, we can have an initial region. Uh, and if I then focus myself, I will be somewhere in the center of Germany. That also means Initially, I wanted to uh, show you the Expo location plugin because with the Expo location, you can also get the user's location and then you can <clears throat> focus the map on that user location. But we don't really need this um, as we've seen. So let's get rid of that and let's not use the Expo location and let's just let the map handle uh, everything there is. Good. In terms of styling, uh, by the way, what we can do as well is since we want to fill that whole view, we could just use stylesheet.absolutefill. That wouldn't make a difference right now, but we can remove <laughs> these stylings down here as we don't require them anymore. And if we don't do a reload, the map should still fill the whole view. Good, that is a good start. Now, what we really wanna do is we wanna display our marker stuff. And I already did the, the button thing again. That's strange. Um, what we want to do is we render, render our buttons and we have our listings and we can now simply render markers inside of the map. So let's do this. We can just open it up here and put an ending bracket here and then we're going to say listings and as far as I know the geodata has yeah a features key so under features is the actual array with all the data. So in this case, it's going to be listings.features.map. And we have an item, let's say, actually the item should be a listing or it's a geo listing. I don't know if there's a difference. Mm, honestly, I don't know exactly. We're gonna see, uh, it will be interesting to see. So for every listing, we want to create a marker now from React Native Maps. And that marker, of course, has some coordinates and those coordinates are simply uh, latitude and longitude. So latitude is item dot, um, so does it exist in here? No, it doesn't. That's the problem because the listing here has properties um, or geometry coordinates. No, that's not really what we want to do. Yeah, it looks like this setup is definitely, um, we could put this into its own interface. Uh, where did we put our interfaces? Here, uh, let's do a new listing 
geo.ts and let's try my extension again json to uh, something okay maybe you had too much of that i'm sorry about that um but what i want is to at least have one of these okay so let's try it like this json ah yeah well, here we go now we got it so we're going to call this listing geo um, and we're going to export that interface. So, okay, and now we can go back and we can confidently use this. So this is now a listing geo object, not just a listing object. We can get rid of that again. And that should help us to use properties. And then we should have latitude. Nice. Now we got the code completion. We're back in the game. And longitude is, of course, item dot properties dot longitude. Okay, mm, do we need, um, what's your problem marker? Um, okay, I think type string is not assignable to something else. What is the type string? Okay, it's expecting a number. So we can just put a plus in here if that is the case. Okay, let's see again. Each child in a list should have a unique key. That is very true. So let's definitely put a key on this. Uh, that could be item dot um, properties dot id. Yeah. And uh, let's see. Do we get some markers now? Yeah, we have a bunch of markers here in Berlin coming up. Um, I can zoom in and oh, yeah, as we've seen before, I think we got six hundred sixty six markers. Um, actually, this renders quite performant. Not too bad. Not too bad. Uh, and. When I press on a marker, mm, something should happen. Something should happen. So let's add a function. Let's add uh, const on marker selected. On marker selected. And that will get an event. And let's for now just lock out the event stuff. And we're going to put in the on marker selected on the marker. So I think we can just have on press here. So on press, da -da, on marker selected, and we're going to pass in um, probably just the current item. Okay, so if I now press on a marker, let's do one up here. Yeah, it gives me the whole information. And what I'm interested in, and that also actually means that on marker selected, it's not any, it's listing geo in that case again. Um, and that finally means that we can have a link or use our router. So let's use the router again from Expo. And then we can just call router.push. Um, and we can go to slash listing. Hello, uh, slash listing, right? slash um, the ID of that marker, which is, what is it? What do we call this? It's actually an item. So item.properties.id. Okay. Okay. And if I'm lucky, we should now be able to click on a marker and it should actually show um, the details page for that listing. Yeah. Oh, that looks beautiful. A lake house with private dock, 30 minutes to downtown Berlin. I should go there for 79 euros per night. That's nice. Um, yeah, these outside seem to be like more beautiful than what you get right in Berlin. Oh, that looks like a real antique uh, object. Anyway, so we have the on press for our marker. Um, and what we can do as well is I think we could give it a custom view. So let's try that out. Um, let's just make sure we close it and use a custom view. We're going to give this some styling. Uh, we're going to have to put that in place in a second. Mm, just adding it down here and let's try to render the price here. Okay, so we go with uh, text. That means we also need a specific styles.marker text in a second. Okay, can put this down as well. 
and then let's do uh, euros and then item dot properties dot I don't know price per night or something. Yeah, price. That's it. So this means we're seeing a bunch of numbers. <laughs> um, and of course, we should render the marker with some padding and background color. Uh, so let's give this a background color of white. White and then it already becomes a bit better. Yeah, now it's becoming better. Let's add some padding and then all the items start to look better. I don't know how I'm able to press the wrong key the whole day. Um, every time I press option, I mean, I want to zoom in, but um, it's just not doing my zoom in thing. Um, well, okay, this is how the marker currently looks. We're going to focus on one or two and then develop them. What we want to see is something uh, the, the preview had before. So more like rounded with a bit of drop shadow. That's, that's what we are after here. Uh, so therefore, let's add the usual shadow that I had before. Uh, elevation, I don't know, five and some shadow color. Okay, and I definitely want to have a border radius of border radius of like 12. Okay, yeah, that starts to look good. We have our background color. I will just make sure that we align everything. So let's do align items center and justify center and justify content center. Okay, now everything is aligned. We have the border radius, we have the background color. I don't feel like the shadow is looking amazing, but is there a shadow? It's not getting better if I zoom in, right? Um, I think it does have a, a slight, like a, a tiny shadow. Let's say it's, if we change this to 0 0.5. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, so there is a tiny shadow. Um, does it, the border have a problem? Uh, if we do some margin, I feel like it's okay. It, it looks okay to me. But the marker text should definitely be a bit bigger still. So let's use a bigger font size. Okay, yeah, those offerings look better. Looks better to me. <coughs> the only problem that we have right now is we have tons of <laughs> tons of prices here. And we do want to cluster them. And there is actually a way to cluster these. And that way is unbelievable easy. So I found this package called React Native Map Clustering, which looks somewhat like this. So let's install it and let's see how to use it. Uh, we can go ahead and simply say npx expo install React Native Map Clustering. And what we need to do is we just simply need to switch out our map view. Really, it's that easy. So instead of using the map view from React Native Maps, I will now use the map view from React Native Map Clustering. Let's hit save and let's see what happens. I will go back to Germany. Uh, what was this was the zoom out stuff. And uh -huh, here we go. We have some clusters. We have some default color clusters. We also have a uh, warning coming up. Overriding previous layout animation with new one. The fix to this seems to be um, adding to the map view uh, animation enabled false. So we're gonna have some animations anyway, um, but this should fix that problem. Okay, and we see the clusters actually work nice. I can click on a cluster and it brings me down into the offerings, if I go back, uh, we got this. So I can nicely scroll, uh, zoom in. I really like this package, it's really, it's really cool. Now, there's one more thing that I wanna change, uh, and that is the, the clustering color stuff. So we can now add new properties to our map view, which are the cluster color. So I will give this a uh, white color. Um, that also means if the cluster is white, the text should probably be black. So cluster text color should be set to uh, 0, 0, 0. And the map should at some point maybe reload. That would be cool. Oh no, then I'm back in San Francisco. Why am I back in San Francisco? Can't I just like be straight in Berlin? Uh, 
Okay, so we see cluster is now white with black text and we can even give it a cluster uh, font family. So cluster font family could be our Montserrat semi bold. And with that, we have nice clusters, but there's something else. I wanna make these clusters look different. As you can see, these are like, like these pills with a price. And I wanna make the clusters look different. And there's actually a way to override how the clusters are rendered. So you can create your own uh, render cluster function here. And for every cluster, you can define how it should be rendered. You can find some uh, in, in information, that's the word I was looking for, uh, on the page on GitHub of the React Native map clustering. Basically, you can extract all these informations and you can get the number of points from a cluster like this. And then you just have to return how that custom marker should look like. Um, are they using the marker? They're using the default marker, I guess. So let's return um, marker. And on that marker, we're gonna have to set key to, let's say the ID, or we can say uh, cluster slash, okay, where's the, what am I actually looking for? <laughs> totally lost which I was looking for uh, cluster ID that's the one and within I want to render my marker which could look like this a view saying test for now um, property coordinate is missing okay yeah that's of course the same we had before so my coordinate is now geometry extracted from the cluster and then coordinates one uh, or zero that's actually something um, I wonder if we need the geometry here or yeah I think we need that one we need to use that one let's try let's try it with this basic implementation and let's pass render cluster to our map view so there should be a render cluster and then we can replace it with our own text strings must be how many times did we get this like we can make a drinking game out of this Simon gets this issue you have to drink uh, by the way I don't recommend drinking I don't drink alcohol um, but where's the problem? Okay, yeah, here's the problem. Okay, here we go. Now back to Germany, back to zooming out a bit, and let's see how the cluster looks. Where is it, Berlin? Berlin, where are you? Uh, there's Berlin. Okay, so our cluster right now looks pretty boring. Um, it just says test. Okay, so in the middle of Berlin, you can somewhat see that here and there, there's a cluster. So this is how we can create our own custom cluster. And with that, um, all we have to do is now add our own styling. And also, um, I missed one additional feature. So clicking on this doesn't work. We have to use on press here and define our own function, but we're getting this anyway up here extracted from the cluster. So that, that just makes um, the on press of the cluster work again. But now let's do some custom styling. Let's say the view here um, has styles.marker um, and for the text we can use our own styling. Um, let's say color black. Does it? I think it's automatically using color black but I want to align the items here in the center. I think they weren't aligned when I tried this out. And font family, of course, mon semi bold. And with that, uh, all the clusters become <laughs> test, 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 but they definitely look how the clusters should look now. And instead of saying test, we will now say how many points are within the cluster. So we can just use points, uh, which we extracted up here. So points from properties, point count. This is coming from the uh, clustering package. And finally, we see again, here are five clusters. There are three more down here. They should be beautiful. Oh, 27, that's pretty cheap. Um, well, yeah, okay, that's what you get for 27 euros. What do you get for 69? Um, okay, that was that one. Uh, it's really fun to use this and play around with the clusters. We could probably give the clusters even more padding, but if you have a big map, I think, yeah, I think this is pretty cool. And we got this in a quite easy and simple way. 
um, because we just installed the map clustering and exchanged it. And I mean, yeah, we overwrite the render cluster function, but otherwise you could also use the default and just style it and, and you're done with it. So that's a pretty full, powerful feature. And with that, we have already finished the map in the background. So our map is now included here in the index file. And for the next step, we're gonna have to see how we can make that work even better with the bottom sheet. Okay, now it's time to combine our map and the listings view we did before. And for that, we are going to use the React Native bottom sheet, oops, from Gorehom, which I've used in uh, some tutorials before. It is a great component, so let's get started by installing it first of all and also installing the react native gesture handler although i actually did not add this to my app so i don't know if we really need it anyway uh, install gorham bottom sheet currently using version 4 and expo install react native gesture handler i'm not wrapping this around my app unless i i see a warning that i have to um so usually that's required for um the gesture handler but yeah let's see how it works out um, our plan is to have something like this. So we have the map in the background and at the bottom we have this component which can be dragged to the top. When you drag it top, um, it should just show the list. So putting this up will result in this. And if we press the map button, we of course go back here. So this whole thing should be collapsed again into the bottom sheet. I hope that's clear from, from my drawings. Uh, is we're going to implement this. Um, the first thing that I want to do is wrap our listings, uh, which we can display, uh, into an actual bottom sheet. So yeah, if we display both, <laughs> both sucks and it's not working. So we're definitely not doing it like that. Instead, we will do a custom listings bottom sheet. So let's add that to the components. Uh, listing, do we want to call, yeah, let's call it uh, listings bottom sheet dot TSX. And this one will be our listings bottom sheet. And of course we have an interface for the props here as well. Those will be the listings, uh, going to be an array of, actually, actually it's not an any, it's an, a listing array, right? Uh, it's an array of listings and we also have a category here. Uh, remember, we had some logic to update the view and we're gonna have see probably some problems with that. Um, I don't wanna foreshadow this, but we might have to do some performance optimizations later down the road. All right, so we got listings, we got props and within index, we can already add this now. Let's add it afterwards, listings, bottom sheet, uh, putting in the listings, which will be uh, our items and category is category okay um that should yeah render just a little view down there that's not important because this view will now change completely as this becomes a bottom sheet uh, the import for the bottom sheet it would just bottom sheet <laughs> just a bottom sheet and not the import from some strange typescript library i don't know Something's going wrong here, either with Visual Studio Code or uh, with what I'm doing. Anyway, um, we probably also need a reference to that. So let's get that const bottom sheet ref equals use ref, um, not use reducer, <laughs> use ref. Uh, we definitely need to reduce, uh, remove that again. Come on, I'm not working with a reducer here. And that is null, and then we can attach this. So we will later have control over the bottom sheet from code as well. Now, what we need for the bottom sheet to work are snap points. So we can set them up here, const snap points. Those are the points where this bottom sheet snaps, snap points. Um, and they're going to be a percentage, and we're gonna memoize these, so that's recommended. So use memo, and we memoize, we're gonna do at 10% and at 100 percent so we're gonna always have it a tiny bit open at the bottom and then completely open at the end empty dependencies array and pass the snap points to the bottom sheet snap points equal snap points okay um let's put some content in here uh let's just put in 
Actually, we can put in our whole listings if we wanted to. Um, I'll just give this here a style of flex one. And then I will put in, so this is the cool thing. We have our listings component and we can just use it now. And for the listings, we should have the listings. And for the category, we have our category props. Category, and if we are lucky, this should already render. Okay, um, that's good, good start. We can see down here, we have this bottom sheet. I can drag it up, so here is 10%. And here it seems to be at 100%. And within, we have a nice list that we can scroll. It's not perfect yet. Uh, so there are a few things we need to optimize. But I think this is already a promising start. It's a really promising start. <laughs> Looks better than I expected. Um, let's see. We can put it to the side. I want to change the indicator color. That's the most important part here. <laughs> so let's say handle indicator style it should use my own color so for the background color i will use colors dot gray so that makes it look like our app um i don't want this to completely close when i uh, put it down so you can disable this by saying enable pen down to close equals false but um, maybe that is also the default and I will set the index, which is the um, first snap point to one. So that is where it should be initially. And that also means if I reload now, that exactly it is initially opened. Mm, okay, not too bad, not too bad. We also need a button um, now. Let's put this down here so we can toggle the map. Uh, style, I will give this the styles.absolute button. Uh, we don't have that yet. So we're going to create the style sheet, React Native Styles. What is this? Hmm. What is the difference here? React Native Style. Mm, okay, I kind of like the first one better. Uh, so RNSS it seems to be style sheet. And then we have the absolute button and let's add the style sheet to React Native up here. And the absolute button should be positioned in absolute fashion, of course. Uh, we'll do it 30 pixels from the bottom using 100% of the width so we can center our items. That's basically just the view around it. And then we're going to add a touchable opacity inside of it. And on press, we will call something like show map const show map we're gonna have to define that will be in a second pass show map to on press um, and then for the style we will use styles.button this is not the default red button we have seen before so we're gonna require some uh, different styling uh, probably something like background color darkish colors um, colors dot we do have colors already don't we yeah Okay, mm, touchable opacity has the styling and for the text, we can say map. And after that, we can present an Ionicon. Ionicon's name is map as well. Size, something like 20. Um, and color is white in this case, actually, because the touchable opacity should be black. Okay, not too bad. Uh, <laughs> Almost, almost, we're getting there. Um, so to style that, let's put it, can I put this up here? So yeah, oh uh, no, uh, I'll put it here. Then my face should not be cover the button. Uh, for the button, let's give it some padding. We usually have a padding of 16. We could have probably defined that somewhere as well. Uh, let's give it a fixed height of 50. Uh, and now we wanna align the item center and we wanna make this a row. So let's use flex direction row. Uh, actually, what I notice is that the map is not showing up. So let's use the style here, font family mon sb and a color of white. Okay, now we have map. Mm, now we need some margin or let's align the items in the center first. Align items center. And we also need 
Um, probably uh, that looks like pretty, actually that looks pretty good. We just need a good border radius. Border radius of thirty. Yep. Mm, we could just use a little gap now between those elements. Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. Um, this looks quite okay. We can probably also have. I don't know why I had margin horizontal. Probably I was just trying something. But that won't change a thing here. So that's not really making any difference. Um, and finally, for the sheet, for the bottom sheet, I will also add a little container so it gets some shadow. So you see, it's not really having any shadow. So I will add styling for the sheet container. And we're going to add this sheet container styling to the styles of the bottom sheet. Let's find the place here. Styles.sheet container. Let's put it there. And this one will get a background color of white. So we can apply some nice little shadow again. Uh, let's use it like this. And then we should see we have this nice little border up there. Can we also have the border radius again? Let's see. I'm not completely sure. Uh, I don't know what the border radius was. Um, yeah, we looks like we can. Okay, so if we now put the uh, scroll uh, the the bottom sheet to the bottom, I think that looks pretty cool. I can use my map just as I want to. Okay, the locate button is a bit hidden now, so you could certainly add your own locate button at the top, and then as I said before, use uh, Expo geolocation or something. But I'm now able to use it, and I go to details. So that stuff. Uh, all of that stuff seems to work fine. There are just some minor changes. Okay, so on press map, I want to show the map. That's the next thing. So within my show map function, we can now call bottom sheet ref current collapse to collapse to the uh, smallest point. So if I press this, whoosh, it's going back down. Okay, it's as easy as that. Um, additionally, if I'm now scrolling and I press map, I kind of want to get rid of this. So I want to scroll this list again to the top. Now it gets complicated because the problem here is this list is now within uh, listings. I'm not really changing the category here. So I need a different way to update my listings. Uh, and therefore, we're going to introduce a little hack that I found, or I don't know if it's a hack or uh, the best way to do this. So let's go into our listings. And within the interface, we will add refresh. Refresh is a number. Refresh. It's a number. Okay. Um, and we're adding a use effect here. And we're checking as a dependency refresh. So whenever refresh changes, this will be called. Uh, we can extract this here from our props. And then we're going to say uh, refresh listings. Okay, and the hack is now that we use on our listings bottom sheet a state. So we're using refresh, set refresh. Uh, and we are using a value, just using use state uh, zero. And when I show my map, I will just call set refresh with refresh plus one. So we're just counting up, it, it really completely random. And we're passing that refresh now to the listing component. And as a result, when I click that button, we're counting up refresh, which will then trigger the use effect to refresh listing. So you see, I can be here all the time. And when I click the map button, we got this. And that gives us the possibility on the listing page to actually refresh and uh, load this page. So uh, we will check that it's not doing this initially, only if refresh is set. I want to um, scroll my list to the top, which we can use with, uh, do we have a list ref? Yes, we have a list ref dot current dot scroll to offset. I want to scroll to the offset uh, offset of zero, and I want to do this animated. Mm, yeah, why not? All right, let's see. So I can open this list now. Um, I can scroll down, and if I press map, you see it's going back down. 
So if I go it up, I'm back at the top of the list. Um, probably that's not always the behavior you want, but this is now working as well. And there's one additional thing. So I want to render a uh, text like when you close this, um, it shows like 800 cabins. And I want to do the same. So if I close this down, I want to have some text up here. To achieve that, uh, we will go into the listings component. So this is not the bottom sheet, this is the listings component. We have the render row. I don't really want to affect that. What I want to change is I want to add to the flat list here a list header component. And that should just render a little text element. Let's say. 444 homes and then we see we got this 44 homes appearing above the list okay so that is usually the way if you have like a list and you want to have something above it that usually works pretty good um, we should have the information actually that should be items dot length homes uh, and we're going to give this some styling so styles dot I don't know info and info uh, should be pretty easy text align center and our font family I think I used it in pretty much all the places I don't know if I, I missed a place where I added I would have liked to just use it globally but I couldn't find a way how we can use uh, that stuff globally I don't know and let's add margin top four as well so with that in place we have 66 homes and let's do this full screen here if I click it down it's here I can put it up I can scroll through this and it looks like this. There's one thing that bugs me and that is here. If the list is at the top, I still see like these tiny edges because we have rounded corners and we also see this information. I kind of want to hide this when it is up. Um, so I think what I want to do is, let's see, for the listing, uh, where could we introduce that? Uh, where did I introduce that before? I think it was in the index. I think it was in the index file. Uh, index file, yeah, where we had margin top 130. Let's just change this to 80. Yeah, then it not showing that stuff. And yeah, I can drag it up, but I think that's cool. That's actually a pretty cool effect. And if I go down, it's uh, just like this. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, this works really great. Um, but the only, what you need, ah, good point. So what you see right here is I would really like to, with a big pen down, close this bottom sheet. But right now I can only go to the map by clicking on that button. And I think we can improve that by going to the listings bottom sheet. No, going to the listings. And instead of using a flat list component, we can use an according component from the bottom sheet package because the Gorham bottom sheet package actually has some components like a bottom sheet view and a scroll view and bottom sheet flesh list. So why not use them? They are optimized for these kind of lists. So let's just change this for a bottom sheet flat list component. Um, now the ref is mad at me because this is not a thing anymore. But let's change this to bottom uh bottom sheet flat list methods and then everyone should be happy again let's see voila now with a big slide down i can also do the, it just feels so natural if you deploy this you have to deploy this to your um device ios android doesn't matter it just feels so natural it feels exactly like in the official airbnb application really it's it's really good um, all the other stuff is still working, like scrolling it down uh, and removing stuff. Okay, um, do we need anything else in here? I feel like there was something uh, that I wanted to change. Okay, yeah, this is something I wanted to talk about. So we added this change of the category and notice, you notice something? It takes like a half a second until it switches to the next thing. And the problem here seems to be that within the index file, um, the we changed the category and the bottom sheet because the category, which is an input, changes. Uh, or yeah, it's not the map; it's it's the the listings bottom sheet. Um, or is it the map? 
I think it's actually the map. Uh, the map just re-renders because, oh yeah, of course, we are resetting the input and then the listings map, I think, re-renders. And because the map has like 600 markers and stuff, it just really takes a lot of time. So what we can do to improve that performance is as we don't really need to redraw it uh, all the time, we could probably do it at some point, but not right now. We can use on the listings map, we can memoize the whole component. So we can put memo here around it. Uh, and then I need to be careful. I need to add one more bracket here. And where we finish it, uh, I need to close that bracket and hit save. And as a result, let's let's reload. Let's reload that stuff. As a result, we can again instantly go to the next category or almost instantly. Um, do we need to use memo anywhere else? Mm. I think that should be fine so far. Um, where did we use it as well? In the index. In the index, I'm now using listings geodata directly. I don't know if it makes a difference if I do it like this. Uh, if I use like geo items with listings geodata, uh, geo items, and then pass this to my listings map. If I also memoize that stuff. See if this gives a performance boost as well. Nah, not really. That's not really making a big change. Um, also, when I change the category right now, we're not going uh, somewhere else. Is that a problem? Mm, I don't think so. I think this is actually fine just as it is. So we have the bottom sheen, which we can drag up. We have a switch between the map. We can still use everything else that we want. So I'm just going through the stuff that I wanted to show you and I feel like we did it. We have our little refresh hack <laughs> in place, uh, which allows us to scroll the list back by basically going from the one child to the next child. We have a list header component. We're now using the bottom uh, sheet thing. So I think we have pretty much covered everything for this view. Uh, which gives us a really robust view, uh, still including the animations. Uh, I think there's no more bug. Yeah, this is pretty, pretty instant now. And we can heat over to the next screen. So we're finished with this screen, with the setup of uh, listings, with the map, with the details page. We're finished with all of that. There are just two more areas I want to talk about. I want to talk about the profile and how we can use Clark now again to update the user profile. And afterwards, we're going to create an epic blurred model overlay. So let's continue with some clerk fun. In this part, we want to update our profile page to allow the user to change the name and also upload an image to clerk. Because right now the user can only sign in and we can do more. As far as I know, once we got started, we enabled Yes, the user can change personal information. So there are a lot of settings you can do inside of Clerk um, to update your settings. Again, Clerk is, of course, also the sponsor of this video. So let's see how we can update our users on that page. That means we can close most of the other stuff for now and head over to the profile page. We already extract the sign out and is sign in from use auth, but we will now also get the actual user object using uh, use user. <laughs> I still love these names like uh, the whole use stuff. It's, it's fun. I mean, it's fun. So we can also set first name, last name and email uh, directly to our state by using the user we get in here and then first name, last name and the first email address because the user can actually have multiple emails. We will also add a little edit state. So we will be able to actually edit our data and make it look cool. Uh, and that will be, of course, false in the beginning. Now, we will also add a little use effect here where we're going to check if we currently already have a user because I'm not sure if... Will this work? Maybe we don't need the use effect. Yeah, but if the user changes... Yeah, uh, yeah, we still need that. Yeah, we need that. We need that. Um, if the user changes, I want to also update that stuff. So if we do... Uh, or if we don't have a user... Then I want to return and otherwise I want to set my stuff. And for this, uh, Copilot is really great. Like Copilot would know that I want to do exactly this and set our state right now. But anyway, uh, let's follow this up by adding a function on save user, 
which we want to call uh, probably an async function to update the user data at some point. Async, okay, and then we also have const on capture image. As I said, we definitely want to capture an image and upload that to Clark at some point. Good. Now let's continue with our view. So within my view, uh, I want to show a little uh, header up here. So let's put in style. Do we already have the styles? No, we don't even have the styles yet. Header container. Um, so React Native style sheet, header container goes here, header container will be something and style sheet will be added up here. I will never get back the, the 10 seconds of my life it costs me. Um, in the header, I wanna add a flex direction row and I will add some padding of 24. And then I want to put in, uh, in the header, the text profile. Okay, let's hit save and also um, to the right hand side they had like an icon so I will add an Ionicons name uh, notifications outline and size is going to be 26. I want to align them to the different sides here so I will use justify content uh, space between. Okay, so we have one on the left um, align items. I never get like which is which. So yeah, that should align the stuff here. And for the profile, I of course want to have uh, some bigger styling. So let's use styles.header. And for the header, I want to update the font family as always and the size. Uh, I also want to, um, I think Airbnb is on that page, not showing, um, or we should actually update it in the tabs layout. Yeah, here uh, where we have the name profile, we have the tab bar label, I wanna hide the header. So they're not really showing the header on that page. So I will set header shown to false, which introduces a new problem. Uh, now we should wrap our profile page in a save area view. Save area view from React Native and style can be taken from our classic default styles.container, that should uh, be fine. Mm, cannot find safe area view yet. Um, voila. No, still a problem. Um, yeah, that's certainly nothing I want. Okay, here we go. Nice profile page. Um, good starting point. So, if we are signed in, um, we're gonna have to talk about these buttons. So, if we are signed in, I want to have a button to log out. So let's just add a button title log out. Actually, exactly this button, I think. So if we're signed in, I have the sign out button. I will give it the color uh, colors dot dark. So then we have a nice theme here. If we are not signed in, I will have my link. Uh, but of course, I don't want this to be just a text. I want this to be a button as well. And remember, in those cases, use as child with the link component. Um, I will stay logged in for the moment so we can create our user view. So if we have a user, uh, I want to render all the other fun in here. Do we have brackets? Yes. Uh, so I want to render that in a, a little card. So let's do styles.card. And for the card, I want to use a very classic card setup. So this is something uh, Copilot is really, really great at. If you tell it like, uh, I want to have a style sheet card, it will almost always give you something like this, which looks pretty good. So look at that card. This is really the kind of card I want to see, maybe with less shadow, I don't know. Uh, but overall, it's it's pretty good, I think. It's pretty good. Um, so we have the card. Now within that card, let's first of all render our image. And I will render the image in a touchable opacity so I can just click on it and update it. Touchable opacity goes up here. And on press, we can already assign this to our on capture image. And within, I just simply use the image and the image now comes from our user object. So that's pretty cool. Uh, we can use the URI from user, if we have an image, uh, user question mark dot uh, image URL. 
And then we're gonna need some styling. So let's use an avatar styling here. That should look good. So for the avatar, we can just use something like width and height of 100. Oh, we could just say dot. Okay, that's cool. Can I also say H? Oh, that's cool, that's cool. Can I also say border radius? Uh, these shortcuts, good, good. Uh, I will give it also a default like background color. So in case we don't have an image, we should still see the background color. Uh, okay, just like this. Yeah, we've seen it during loading, it shows it, and then it actually shows my image. So that's pretty cool. I did not change my image. This is just taken because I signed into Clark with Google. Um, so my user is here. And then the image was taken directly from Google. That's pretty cool. I like that. I like that. Okay, let's also, before we get into capturing the image, um, let's add the fields to update our name and also display the name. So let's add a view. Um, we're going to add flex direction row in here once again. And a little gap between the items of six. And now we're going to have to make a separation. So if we're not editing, uh, in that case, I want to render uh, something. So we could do it in two ways. Uh, I'm going to do it like this. In the other case, we're going to render something else. So that is the syntax. If we're not, or then I should probably do, if we're editing, that's usually how you put it in a better way. If we're editing, I just want to render uh, text inputs. If I'm not editing, I want to render um a view okay now i'm getting confused so if i'm editing i'm here if i'm not <laughs> editing uh, i'm here there will be some style i actually don't know what kind of style yet uh can we just close this okay if i'm not editing what's your problem with that view um do we need something in here like uh edit time and here we have this um, view. So within that view, I will just put a uh, text element to render our name, uh, the first name and the last name. Um, so text will be first name and last name. Okay, so that uh, should render somewhere. Yeah, it renders here. We can probably change that to have a bit bigger font size. Um, okay, yeah, here we go with the name. And then I will add a little touchable opacity after that. Um, this is going to be, I will call this the edit row. Style.edit row. Uh, okay, yeah, then we need only one pair of brackets if I have the edit row. Uh, put it down here and that should span up or take up the whole width here um, and align the items just like this in the center because mm, what's your pro okay yeah, it's it's styles.edit row how can we get back there okay here we go um, because I want to display like a button after it <coughs> touchable opacity and on press i want to activate my edit mode so it renders like this and if i press on the button it should render the text inputs instead if you use the airbnb application it also goes through another page so it's a bit more complicated uh, we're just going to do it like this so set edit true in that case and then we're going to use ionicons name create outline size of 24 and a dark color. Okie dokie. Here we go. Pressing on this will reveal the other row. And that other row will, of course, also have some, some sort of like uh, fallback for that. Um, beyond all the editing stuff, I will also display for reference the email. So we, we have that in our state anyway before we do the full editing. I just want to show this. We get all this information on the user object. So we can also use the user directly. Uh, you can say user created add. There's a lot of information on the user object. I will cast this to a local date string. So now it should also display my email and since when the user exists. Um, I'm in that view. I feel like I don't want to be in that view. 
Yeah, I want to be here. That's better. Okay, our profile is coming together nicely. Really, like it's a clean, clean, nice, clean profile, isn't it? Mm, mm -hmm, mm. I think it is. Okay, we have the yeah. We're in the edit mode. How can I leave the edit mode? Uh, I probably need another touchable opacity in here. Uh, let's add that first. Uh, on press, this will call save user. Um, and we'll get rid of that for now. And that will be check mark outline. Um, okay, so I can press that. And on save user, I will definitely set edit back to false. So now I already have that flow and I just need to add the input fields. That feels right. That feels good. Okay, mm, so within that view, once we are editing, mm, we will also wrap it with the edit row, just like we had before. Okay, and then we can just put in two text inputs here instead of the actual text elements. So placeholder is something like first name, not flirt name, first <laughs> name uh, value would be our first name or an empty string. Then we have the onChange text, which we just said. So onChange text, we can just pass in set first name from our state. And for the style, we can actually use our default styles again. Default, uh, no, that was wrong. Uh, default styles dot input field. Um, and let's see how what that gives. Uh, I can press edit and we have a small field. I will actually uh, use a specific width of at least 100. Yeah, that looks better, I think. Um, and now let's just replicate this. Let's use a second one. This will be last name, last name, uh, set last name. And then we have this. Okay, we have this nice easy switch between input fields and hitting save here. We could probably say that the uh, edit row always have a specific height. Let's see if I always give it like a height of 60 or something. That would stay in the same place. That would probably feel even better, but maybe even 50 might be enough. Yeah, 50 is also enough. Uh, that feels even better. Now it's not like this switch. Okay, so now we need to implement two functions. We need to update the user and we need to update the image. So on save user, we can now um, try, I'm gonna put this in a try catch block and I will await user question mark because it's optional and call update on the user. And to update, I can now pass all the information that I want to update from the user. So in this case, I want user a first name and last name. Okay, yeah, if I do it like this, I would like to do the short form. I can't do it because I have to add the exclamation mark. Mm -mm -mm. Or we can check if we actually have that. If uh, first name and last name, or if not first name or not last name, uh, we will return. So then it's safe to use them in the next line. And I don't need this, and I can do it in the short form way. Cool. Uh, where's the try? I want to add the catch block here. If an error comes up, uh, I'll just console.error this out. I don't expect it actually. Uh, and I will finally do my set edit false. Okay, let's give this a try. At the same time, I will open my clerk dashboard. So let's test this to uh, Charlie. And uh, let's see, profile. Uh, uh, uh. Which profile did I actually change? Is it this one? Do I have to reload this? Yeah, I guess there's no like live connection. Yo, know, it already says Charlie Grimm. Here we go and test this here. I can also change it in here. Um, is it automatically updating in here? It's not, it's not yet. Um, why, why is that the case? Shouldn't it show the update? I mean, it's not really required. How many people are like testing live updates on their name? So it's not really what we need. Uh, but certainly I am able from here to change this which updates my stuff here. So back from 
Charlie Test to Simon Grimm. Okay, good. That part works. Let's see how we can also change our image. For that we need a little, I think, no, we still need something else in the last part. But for now, what we need is the Expo Image Picker. I want to install that to easily pick an image in my page. So I can just import it on the profile page as Image Picker. And then within the on capture image, we can just easily use this. So let result, um, actually, why let? Const result equals await image picker dot launch and I will call launch image library async because I'm in a simulator I can't capture an image right here we're just doing it like this um, media types I only want image picker dot media type options dot uh, images uh, allow editing well I, I actually don't care yeah allow editing true let's set the quality down a bit to 0 0.9 and most importantly I want to have a base 64 result for this so if I get a base 64 result I will be able to upload this directly to clerk so if the result was not cancelled I want to upload this and I will grab or create a base 64 URL by using a little addition to the front so we all have to put data image whatever base64 in front of the actual base64 string and then it's as easy as calling user set profile image I really had a lot more trouble uploading images in the past somewhere else but this way with the base64 file here from Expo worked really really great I was kind of kind of surprised when I implemented this that it just worked so let's see um, I will now use my cool map image here very important so let's use this and let's see okay it's updated in the app is it also updated on the clerk side yes it is so you see it's really as easy as that that works pretty fast right uh, I can also change this to this beautiful uh, yeah that looks so good uh, that's a probably a bit bigger usually the simulator images are a bit bigger but now we get our image updated on clerk and finally let's test our logout so on logout all of this disappears because the user uh, object is gone here and I can now press login back to bring up the dialog that we implemented in the beginning so I can now go again with continue with Google and that should work pretty fast voila and I'm back in my account. So again, I really enjoy working with Clark and using Clark as it's one of the best ways to add user authentication to your project, both web and native. Um, on native, we can't really use their um, their pre-made UI components, which I really enjoy. Maybe this is working in the future because they have like this branding portal where you can update this stuff and. Uh, then you're going to have this cool sign in or sign up component that you can just drop into your web application for native we usually have to follow this uh, custom flow and implement our own stuff but anyway there's pretty much nobody who beats this um, user management of clerk with that in place uh, i think we're ready for one last thing which is building a pretty cool model so there's just one thing left that is when clicking here i want to have this model and that's what we're going to work on now. If you've made it this far, congratulations already. This is now the final part of our Airbnb clone and we want to build something that looks like this. So that's the um, modal popover, whatever. That comes up once we click this button in the official Airbnb application. So let's see what we got. Uh, first of all, what we see is we have a little footer area, which should be uh, sticky, probably absolute positioned. Then for the background, we have some blurred overview uh, overlay over our stuff. So that means we have to put something above our application, uh, which is basically transparent, but also has a little blur. Then we have a tiny little header area up here, uh, which will help us to close that view. And finally, we're going to have three cards. We have card one two and three um, and these cards are interesting because once you click on them they expand and when you go to a different category like here so who's coming expands from who at guests to this card 
And what previously was expanded now becomes this card where it's just where and I'm flexible. So that means we need to implement a few animations here. I mean, we can just do everything with state and just click, 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 um, put it together. But with some animations, we can probably also spice that up. Additionally, there are a few more minor details. Like here, we have a horizontal scrollable list. Uh, and here we have a nice little input. And for the central block, we will actually do I have a screenshot of that as well. Yeah, we do have. So for that block, we're gonna use something like a calendar. I couldn't find a really great package that has the whole Airbnb functionality. So we're just gonna use a really great calendar package, but it's not going to be exactly like Airbnb. So with all of that being set up front, let's get into the app. So we can go open the booking TSX. We can open our topmost layout file and within the topmost layout file, we can probably start. So we already have the setup. We have the transparent model. As we can see, the background is really transparent. I also want to have the header to be transparent. So you've seen the header is still there. Um, and I don't want that. So now if I click it, it looks like this. It looks totally awful, but we're going to fix that in a second. Um, yes, we can still use that. Um, maybe that is actually the best part or the best way to get started. So the header is transparent and I now want to have a custom header. So we will just do this with, uh, I will call this modal header text.tsx. So another custom component and that component is not too hard. Um, I mean, you've seen what we want to do. Basically what we need is uh, this circle and a little switch in the center. So that shouldn't be hard for us to develop. And I can already add that header to my layout file and say, okay, for the header title, I will use this modal header text component instead. Okay, uh, we need to do it like this. And then it should render our custom header once we click there, uh, at least if we save everything. And then it displays up here. Good, not too bad. What is this? What is okay? I don't know. It's probably our page or something. Um, anyway, we're going to fix that in a sec. But let's talk about the model header. So we will add some styling in here. Uh, let's use flex direction row, justify the content. Ooh, that was a nice shortcut. Oh, why did it? It, it, it did automatically do what I wanted, but I don't know how it did it. <laughs> That's the worst, like when it happens and you don't know why it works. Oh no. But this is actually just the center part of that view. So this will only be here in the center. I just noticed that if we do this, um, we might have a, we might run into a problem. Mm, we might run into a problem because we can't really see this. So let's probably better just put the blur on the background. Uh, and for that, we will add a new package npx expo install the expo blur view uh, sometimes not working super great on android so that might be a little caveat here uh, besides that it should work pretty good and this is our booking page here right so we can now wrap our booking page with the blur view import from node modules no certainly not from node modules why why would i do this why would I import that from node modules? Of course not. And if I do it like this, let's see, is it automatically like working? I assume not. I assume we uh, first of all need some styling in here. So the usual styles.container styling should be sufficient in that case. Uh, styles.container, so rank native styles, container, and then flex one. I might need something else in here, but we're gonna see that. Uh, okay, yeah, we need to define the blur intensity now, of course. Um, let's set the blur intensity. Is it blur? What is it called? It's Oh, it's just intensity. Intensity to 70, that is just the amount, how, how hard it will blur your underlying page. And voila, we already got this. And because of the nice fade animation, that comes in pretty naturally. You can also specify the tint color if you want to, like light, I think you can have light or dark. So right now we have light, if I put this to dark, yeah, it's a, it's a lot darker. But we certainly wanna have the light tint here. We also see that our book 
whatever text that is is not in the right place so i will add this in here um 100 mm, maybe yeah that should be fine we could also use margin top 100 probably okay okay you see it's not that easy <laughs> So our content goes up until the top. And I wanna make sure that the blur view is definitely up until the top. Um, and our content only starts here. So we made it work with this little hack. Now with that in place, we can also finish our header component first as we finally see what's going on. Uh, I would like to make my touchable opacity a bit cooler. Um, so I will make the item size a bit smaller. <coughs> <clears throat> and I will give it a custom styling here. So I will give it a white background. Um, oh, back, is that like the short form for background color? <laughs> I learned so many things in this tutorial. <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. Uh, border color is going to be colors.gray. Um, and then we have a border radius of, I don't know, like 20. Um, Okay, oh, I still need the border width of one. Yeah, okay, and some padding. Yes, I think that button looks fine. That looks good. Um, then we can close the layout and we can do the modal header text. So as I said, it's not going to be super complicated. We're just gonna have an active state here, active, uh, set active. And then we can toggle between the different states um, to show uh, which of our states or experiences is currently active. Nothing really fancy. So let's do this. We wrap this with touchable opacity on press. I want to set my uh, set active to zero. I don't know what's wrong with the nine here. And then we have the text component which says stays. And now we do the same again, but for uh, experiences and this will call set active one and then we can click both of them and we just need the according styling below them good um, in terms of the styling we'll use our font family so style font family mon sb and same setup for the other text component okay uh, we of course need a gap here between the items so gap of 10 uh what else do we need oh yeah we need the underline so if it is active uh do i still have the the preview screenshot somewhere yeah if it is active it looks like this with an underline and if it's inactive it is gray so we need some conditional styling here which means for color nope that's not what i wanted for color if active is equal to zero i want to use a black color that is not black that is black and otherwise colors dot gray good uh, and also now for the underline we can use text decoration line uh, and again if active is equal to zero I want to use underline and otherwise none and now we can copy that whole block here to our other object and just replace this and check if active is one and voila we have that so some some stuff is really that easy like it's basic basic react and, and just coding along sometimes it just feels right and, and it just works i mean we could also have the border further down at the top uh, then we would add another view and make that conditional but i think in our case that should be fine um that also means we can now completely focus for the rest of uh, our clone here on the actual booking page because there's a lot we need to do we have basically like the three sections where when and who and we have the footer at the bottom maybe we actually start with the footer at the bottom because it's like the easiest thing in our view um, i will put this at the bottom using react native reanimated an animated view that once again comes up uh, after a short delay so i will use the default styles footer as we have defined before and i use an entering animation again slide in down with a tiny delay of 200 milliseconds should be enough now we can put in the view uh, and that should once again use flex direction row i don't know if there's like a shortcut for flex row 
uh, just seems to be the con uh, for justified content. Apparently, I need the space between this time, <laughs> not uh, center. Uh, space between. But I want the uh, items to be align, uh, align items center. That actually correct. Good. Okay. Now inside of that view, we're gonna have uh, two touchable opacities. We have clear all when we have that standard search button. That sen standard search button uh, will trigger this view to close. So we're not really doing a reload here. Uh, we will just use. Uh, our router to close that overlay. So the second button is pretty easy. Touchable, opacity. Actually, both buttons are easy. Let's let's start with the first one. Um, this should on press clear all the categories in our view. So everything that is selected in these three boxes should be cleared. So let's say um, clear all, or let's call this on clear all. I'm gonna use that for the on press of the first button. Um, touchable opacity. This one needs. An, was there like a, an icon? No, there was only a text. So let's use text style, font size something like 18. Font family again our mon sb, and this was also using text decoration uh, line underline. No, underline. Oh no, I had it. I almost had it, like a perfect, perfect typing. Okay, so let's hit save and I'm putting this up so you can see this. Okay, mm, that's not a line really great yet. Um, let's do the second touchable opacity as well. I want to check something. So this will use router dot back. Mm -hmm. Okay. And for the styling of this touchable opacity, we can or we should be able to use the default styles again. We we'll probably need to use something additionally, but this should first of all be uh, the button. So it becomes this red button. Um, okay, yeah, that's good. Then inside, we're gonna have a text which has the default text styling. So default button text, which makes it white. Okay, good. We also have an icon. So Ionicon's name, uh, what's the name? I think it's search outline for the lens. Uh, size 24, color white. Okay, almost good, <laughs> almost good. Uh, but we also need the button styling here, so I think this also comes from our default styles uh, button icon. Okay, yeah. <laughs> now everything sits on top. Mm, I think that button just needs to be a bit bigger. And it, of course, also needs more padding. So let's add uh, padding right, mm, I don't know, 50. And I will do something like padding left of 20. Okay, now we just need to figure out why our text is like this. Mm, so what is our view? We have flex direction row, align item center. We have the touchable, uh, which should, by the way, also have some styling. Uh, this one should have justify content center as well. Everything is aligned. And the button, the button is not fine. It's the default styles button. Um, we have the right outline. Something is not right in here. I mean, it works and it comes up just like it should. But that icon, that button icon is, I don't know. How do we position that? Uh, absolute to the left. And the button is primary 50 center center. Um, padding left, padding right. Um, let's see, we have the flex direction row, justify content space between, all of that seems to work good. Um, I don't, honestly, honestly, I don't know exactly what is going on right now because the button, the text is in the center. I feel like I messed up in, in some place. Some Something really easy is messed up 
and I can't spot it right now, and I hate it when <laughs> that's the case. Uh, default styles button. Let me do something. Let me try something. I want to grab exactly the code I had here before. Okay, what did I change? What did we change? What what changed between this code and that code? Oh yeah, but the, I changed the values. <laughs> okay, let's try padding right 20 and padding left 50. Oh, voila, it works. <laughs> Uh, and of course that button is not clear all but search. Okay, now we got it. Uh, we have a nice bottom and you see when the view comes up, we have this little delay so it also fades in from the bottom. On click you could then trigger a search, you could put, uh, reply the data back to the parent or uh, in your state have some, some search, you could use Zustand for the state. But anyway, this is only the footer part of our view. We still have to work on all the rest of this view, which is probably even more exciting. But the footer was also an, a nice challenge, I think. It was It was interesting. But the cards now, they will be something different. So as I said, whenever we click on a card, we're gonna trigger an animation and we're gonna uh, set the open state of a card and then show something else. So there's a lot in terms of state that we need to catch. Let's get started by setting open card and set open card using use state. Uh, first of all, the, the card zero should be open. Then we will also um, have a selected place. So in this view with the different globes, where is it? Mm, here. So this will be our selected place. Uh, okay. I can just copy this over. Selected place, set selected place. I don't know if there's like a shortcut for that as well. Uh, I don't think I came across one. Uh, we also need some assets. I actually found or actually took them from the Airbnb application. So you can find this data in the GitHub repository. Again, link below this video. I have a TS file for these places. So it says uh, the different countries, a few examples. And then we have these images of the world taken from that. Again, uh, these are the images from Instagram. Those are not my graphics. Keep that in mind, please. Uh, we have the router and we do have on clear all. On clear all will actually call set selected place back to zero and also set open card back to zero. Okay, we can already finish that one. Now it's time for a card. So for a card, I will reuse some styling here. Um, I think we used that before for a card. Just background color border radius and the shadow and some gap for the elements within the card. And that will make our life a tiny bit easier, but we still have to do a lot of our own coding now. But let's get into it. So I will start with the first card, style, styles.card. And hitting save. Uh, okay, you have to drink because <laughs> I had the problem once again. Um, so if my open card, if the open card is not equal to zero, um, if it is not open, I just want to render this preview, which is basically a big touchable opacity. Um, and since I want to animate this, I want to use an animated touchable opacity. However, that's not easy possible. We have to create our own component in those cases. So I can create an animated touchable opacity using animated from reanimated dot create animated component and then passing in the actual touchable opacity. So this will create our own uh, animated view that we can then use in here. On press, I will certainly uh, set the open card to zero. Um, and within, I wanna render two text elements. I wanna render in this case, uh, style should be something like um, styles.preview text and this will be where and then we're gonna have a second line which is like spread to the right hand side so probably once again a flex direction uh, this should say uh, I'm oops I'm flexible and this is going to be somewhat similar for the other uh, places as well so we have 
um, set open card zero and we need the preview text and the preview date preview data uh, preview date this should actually be preview date I think okay uh, preview text and preview date it's a good nice exercise to like sometimes remember stuff we use in, in different places so preview text uh, again standard way oh, oh oh that import was wrong that we still use the relative path and for the preview date we use something like this so now where's my card where's the actual card I feel like um, open card unequal to zero uh, what am I doing wrong? Oh yeah, and end is missing. Zero and end. Okay, let's see. So now this is not rendering simply because why? Why should it? Um, this is where, by the way, we're gonna do two more of these. We're gonna do when, and we're gonna do who. So I will just copy this over. Okay, so we got three of these. We just need to replace this with the right values now. Okay, we're getting there. <laughs> we're getting there. Second is when and any week. So I really like this. We could make a nice time lapse out of this, how this view comes together. Okay, so when any week at guests. If I click this, actually, I see the where block. Um, so we don't have a fallback yet in place for uh, if the card is actually opened. Uh, we'll probably need to figure that out in a second. But for now, what we need as well is we have the card styling, but the touchable opacity probably needs some styling. So that is the card uh, styles.card preview, what we want to add. So for a preview card, as you can see, we need certainly some more padding in our view. Um, we also need flex direction. Is that like a shorthand? No, I think there is one. I'm pretty sure there is one. Uh, flex direction row, justify content between, space between. And that should already align this correctly once I apply this and add padding 20. Okay. So let's add the styling to every animated uh, touchable opacity. Okay, so it comes together quite nice already. Okay, not too bad, not too bad. Um, on top of that, what we now need is when this enters and exits the view, our uh, animated touchable opacity, we wanna do something. So on entering, I want to use fade in uh, with a duration of let's say 200 and on exiting I want to use fade out with a duration of oops not damping duration of 200 as well and again this will be applied to all of our touchable or animated touchable opacities so now they have a slight animation they still jump because if one disappears, we actually have no way uh, or nothing else to render. So let's get into that now. For the open card, if the card, so if open card is actually equal to zero, in that case, I want to render something else, like the body of the card. Now I'll wrap this in a fragment because we start off with a text element, which says like where to. Um, so it shows up here, but that definitely needs uh, a lot of styling so let's call this uh, card header and this pretty much goes into all of the cards as well again and I think at that point we should be able to switch between different um, cards in our view so this is just a very big font like this all right I think let's just copy over this because we need this all in all blocks again and then we can focus on one block at a time I think so the second one uh, we'll say something like, I don't know, when's your trip or so? When's your trip? And then for the last card, we will put in, if this is equal to two, this is equal to one. Let me check uh, whose 
coming. Okay. So in theory, we are now able to switch between these categories. And you see with a nice um, fade, it becomes a bit nicer. It's not just jumping and everything appears. Uh, we actually have a tiny little fade here. Um, in fact, I, um, I, I wonder if we should uh, add an animated view around this. I don't know if this will make life better or worse. Um, I just feel we're well prepared <laughs> if we have it. Uh, so let's add this here as well. Uh, animated view. And then up here as well, animated view. It just makes me feel better. I don't know why. So in that case, we could even animate. Um, could we animate where to now? Oh, what was that? Mm, definitely don't want that. Uh, animated uh, text. Let's try. If I add an entering animation here, fade in. Would this work? Let's see. We're only using it where to, right? Yeah, I think actually that's cool. I think I like it. What do you think? Maybe it's too much. I don't know. You gotta, you gotta say. Yeah, it's 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 complicated. I think it's complicated, um, but I think I like it. Okay, so that would be an animated text, and down here we have an animated text now as well. Okay, we can switch between them nicely, um, and we got a good foundation for this view to now simply implement the actual card bodies. So um, what we want to do in the where check. So in the where check, we had this, um, actually, I will call this card body, I think. Um, uh, that's a problem with the with the text then. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I feel like we have a problem here with the setup. Uh, but let's see. Let's add some styling for a card body. <clears throat> that should usually give the body some padding. So we will add padding uh, horizontal of 20 and padding bottom of 20 as well. Yeah. <clears throat> Sorry. The problem we notice now is that we have put the text into the body up here. And that's certainly not working. So I will put again our fragment around this and then the view afterwards so that we still have an animated text. But I feel like, yeah, yeah, that's better. That's better. Then we can just play around in the body. So this is now hopefully our final setup for the body of that card. Uh, sorry, I, I really wanted to like play around with a few things. And I think this is the final thing I, I, I really like. That's always the same, like you always have some iterations while developing something. And at some point you just think, oh, yeah, I think that's it. That's the, that's the one I want. So now we want to do the text input. Uh, I will do a little fakie here. I will do a view with that border around so I can put that lens icon in it. Otherwise it's kind of complicated with a text input. Uh, so I will do it like this name will be uh, I will use the iOS search icon size of 20 and color black and then the actual text input from react native um, style uh, I don't think we can use the default styling I mean, we can try but um, I don't know if this is going to work Otherwise, we'll just do our own. Placeholder will be a search destination. And we can also color that if we want to. So you can have the place uh, placeholder text color. I will, of course, use my own colors.gray for that. And hit save. And where did I put something again? Okay, up here. Okay, so now it looks like this. Actually, the search field is not too bad, but... <clears throat> Huh, I don't know. I feel like this is not not it. And we also need some some styling for the search section here. <laughs> yeah, no. Yes, no, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> um, no, no. Let's do our own style. Okay, so we do search section and input field styling ourselves. Search section and input, what did I call this? Input field styling. Yeah, this view requires a lot of um, a lot of things um, to come together. So I wanna give the search section a specific height of 50. 
not 59, just 50. And the input field will have a flex one to span here. Uh, we also have the search icon, we should do this so then we can finally style all the things. So let's go to the icon and give it a style of styles dot search icon. Then we can position that and play around with the three uh, styling classes here. So the search icon is probably just using some, some padding. Okay, then we need to find out our search section <clears throat> should align the items in a row once again. Okay, and we should have a border. So we should have a, a border color and the border width and the border radius. Not too bad. Um, background color can be set to white. Uh, making sure that we align all items, align content center and align items also center. Okay, that looks pretty good. And maybe some margin bottom as well. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. Uh, the search icon has some padding and the input field could use a bit more padding as well. Yeah, I like this. And we don't really, I mean, we can set the background color as well, but I don't think we have to. We'll just do it just in case. So here we go. This is the first part. Now the second part is the horizontal scroll view that follows after the text input. Uh, text input, okay, where are we? Here's the search section. So we're gonna put this after the search section. Scroll view, be careful where you pick the scroll view. We're not using it from React Native, uh, reanimated just from uh, React Native. Horizontal shows horizontal scroll indicator false. And then we can just go through the places. So. I created, I think, yeah, we can import the places from our places uh, TS file, which have just a title and an image. So that should make life a bit easier. In the scroll view, therefore, we use places.map. And for every item and index, we create a little view which is actually a touchable opacity since we can select these places. Touchable opacity. Uh, on press, we will set my selected place. Set selected place to the current index. So we just use some conditional styling again for the different images um, that we should probably now render. So image from React Native, source is Yuri, item dot image. Um, okay, and probably some styling. Mm. Style equals, um, <laughs> yeah, well, we can already do if selected place is equal to index. In that case, we need styles dot uh, place selected and otherwise styles dot place. I think those are two place and place selected. Uh, we can attach here. That should really be something better. Uh, so I don't have to like go down. I mean, we could have a split view and I could just open this up to the side. Would that make actually sense? Probably that does make sense. I don't know if this is easier for you, but now we can see that we attach these. It's not really better. I mean, when the scrolled in, it's not super helpful at all. Um, but anyway, let, let's give it a try like this, just for, for the fun of doing something different after three hours uh, of this video. So the place by default, how should the place by default look? It should have a width of 100 and a height of 100 and a border radius of uh, 10. Okay, each list in the shot uh, should have a key, yes. Once again, I can use the index because I won't change anything. So that should be a unique index. I still don't see the image. Do we have to do like a reload or something? Um, let's see. No, not yet. Um, place selected is, by the way, mostly the, the same. So we're going to use the same width, but this will have a border radius as well. But I would really like to just see my place. Um, why is it not showing up? Probably because <clears throat> <clears throat> the touchable opacity is mad with me or because the scroll view is mad with me. C 
could be could be both could be both um so horizontal shows scroll indicator false uh, we have the touchable opacity did i use any wrong class once again like yeah no touchable opacity animated everything good uh, touchable opacity i mean after the after the image we should also have the text element uh, with a title but that's not changing a whole lot uh, i feel like i made a mistake yeah it's not item it's not a yuri we can directly use it like this ah there we go here we go and i can click them but it is not changing anything so we have now the text below and we can tell it to draw a border around this so let's do a border radius uh no a border width <laughs> border width of two and a border color of colors dot gray colors dot gray yes now it's drawing that nice little border and i can switch mm, i kind of feel like we need some gap um why do we not have a gap between these so my scroll view should have some gap here let's give this the content container style um gap uh 25. <sighs> i think that's it yeah that's it i can also if i'm here and click clear all it brings me back to the first yeah i i really like it i really like it i like our animation it's not perfect like the the change of the duration of the fade here but it's something it's certainly it's certainly good um and our horizontal scroll does work as well and we have the selection so i think compared to this i'm pretty fine oh i see one thing oh probably that scroll view shouldn't be part of the padding here oh. you see um my has some padding here and here while this has no padding um that's a difference um can we fix that if i just put that scroll view outside of the animated view actually not too bad actually not too bad um the only thing is i need some padding now uh padding left of like 10 or what was it like 16 or 20. okay that's not too bad and also at the bottom uh, maybe margin bottom of 20 or maybe 30. Yeah, I think we we kind of fixed that one. We kind of fixed that. Also, there's a bit that gap up there is too big. Like that padding bottom here of the 20. Yeah, I'm getting rid of that. Yeah, I think we just made it even better. Um this is even better now. Uh yeah. The let, let's increase the gap a bit. I want to show that Italy is just like a fraction or maybe if we use 124 the places with and hate yeah that's it that's it <laughs> nice uh actually yeah we could make the text also use semi-bold um can we do this easily like this let me try this out uh where it says item not title can we check if active or selected um what is it selected place selected place equals index in that case i want to use font family uh, semi bold mon sb and otherwise nothing uh, otherwise null uh, <laughs> something must be allowed like just having nothing in there uh, come on would that work also not working why left side of a comma is unused okay yeah we need to make this now an array and also i can get rid of the font family here and put my uh, bracket around i think i got it now yeah that's yeah that's it 
Um, so we had to use the array syntax for the style. And then if the selected place is indexed, we're using the semi bold font for this. Oh, I love it. I love working with you. It becomes a lot better if we do it together. Uh, and I think this view has gotten really, really good. The only thing I don't like is, what do I not like? I, I kind of don't like, this is maybe too much of a gap here. Mm, it feels like it's too big. So the distance between the card body and this down here, maybe that is also just the input, uh, but I can't find, what was it like the, where's my input search, input field, Paddington. Yeah. I. I mean, maybe the search section. Yeah, that's actually it. What if I put this to zero? Actually, not too bad. Actually, not too bad. I think uh, maybe four. <laughs> okay, we're getting a bit uh, into things we don't need to. This is good. Uh, now it looks better. The problem with the padding was resolved and that card number one, we're done with that card. Let's head over to the next card. For the next card, I wanna use a date picker and this is the best thing I found. Actually, I don't know why it has the, the smallest font size ever seen on a website here. I can't read that. Even with like 200 times zoomed in, the font is now okay for me, it's okay. Um, but anyway, we can install this and we can use it. So let's do this, uh -huh, going back here. Expo install React Native Modern Date Picker. So this is a modern date picker. Are there previews of that date picker on the page? Well, a few, and I still don't know why the text, the font size, like this is a hundred. This is the regular font size here. I didn't change, I don't know. Um, so we can just add a date picker to our page. And I wanna add the date picker to my second view. So to the second card in our view. So let's find that. Uh, when? Why is everything here? So here's where, when, uh, and who. Okay, I don't know why the comments were duplicate. Um, we already got when's your trip. I think we noticed that this needs to be outside in a fragment and then the animated view comes after that. And that animated view uh, should also have the card body styling. Okay, animated view, card body styling. And for testing, I will also set my open card to one. That will make the development of this a lot easier. Um, that said, we want to import the date picker. Let's do this up here and you're going to see something. So could not find a declaration for this. Um, you can do uh, funny things with TypeScript, but at this point I really don't want to do. So for this specific library, I will just add, add TS ignore, which will ignore that comment. And so we will just be able to use the date picker. I'm sometimes really not in the mood to fix, not the problems or shortcomings of others, but um, fix something that normally already works. So I'm, I'm really not interested in that. Okay, back to card number one. In the animated view, I add the date picker. Uh, we can specify some options in a second, like the default uh, font. Um, no, the default date picker options, default font. That should be an option, isn't it? Uh, I think I just need to close this here. Um, let's see. Okay, and then date picker already comes up. That's pretty cool. We just will give this our own little touch of styling. Uh, for that, we should also have the current date as a little ISO string. So where we do our state, I will calculate new date to ISO string and then using the substring, that will actually lock out if I put the lock in here uh, to something like this, like a, just a string, otherwise, it's not working great. And with this today string, we can initialize the date picker correctly. Uh, we just have to say today or date. What was it? Uh, I think it was current. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, if you uh, ignore the VS code stuff, you really don't get a lot of code completion. <laughs> um, selected, so I was just doing this based on uh, the documentation. If I do it like this, I have the current and I have the selected and I wanna use the mode um, calendar. So there are different modes that we can use. Let's do a refresh. 
Well, let's see. Okay, so we got this calendar. I can switch between the month. Not too bad. Uh, we could probably also style the arrows. Um, I don't really want these borders. They I don't like them. Border color um, transparent, and I will use the main color so we can set a main color and that's of course my primary color so that should give us some nice uh, red look and next to the default font we can also specify a header font for which i will use mon sb okay and we see it fits really nicely now into our application. I mean, I can only select a date in the Airbnb application. You can now select like a range or you click on the second date and it marks all of these in a certain color. Probably we could even do this with that component. I haven't tried it yet. There was one component that was also called like Airbnb something. I couldn't really make it work yet. Um, so maybe in the future we're gonna see even better component, but I think this one is still pretty good. Um, to use and I mean you can just use the first uh, date that should probably work and still this is also working great in our application and with that we have already finished the second part uh, the second card of this view now on to the final card which I think shouldn't be too hard mm, just gonna put this out here doing what we did before wrapping everything and then using the uh styles dot card for why is this only a view uh, i got confused now it's the card body right yeah yeah yeah. that's the card body don't get overly excited simon just finish this calm and easy set my open card for debugging to two so who's coming who's coming to our trip i don't know who's coming brother sister maybe everyone uh, so for this, I will add a little array up here. I will call this guest groups. So these are the different categories that I've seen here in the app. We have adults, children, infants, and pets. And all of them have a count and a little text. And to actually interact with the count of this, I will set this now to a state. So I will use groups. And as the initial value, I will use my... That is not... <laughs> So many typos, so many typos everywhere. <laughs> oh, guest groups. Okay, we got that. Um, and with those groups, we can now create a nice view with a little uh, iteration on that. That view is definitely too big. We might have done the different cards in components. So if you want to refactor this application, I recommend you start here and put them maybe into different components. That could make this view a lot better readable. Yeah, a, a lot better. Okay, but I don't wanna confuse you with that on top now uh, with a refactoring. So we will just continue in here. And for every group, uh, we wanna create one block. So groups, map, item, and index. I don't know what we will need. And for every or each of those, I will create a view. Key will be the index. And styling will be, um, I don't know, styles.guestItem. Um, oh, we need to go to the bottom again here. Um, so the guest item is, as we can see, flex direction row, uh, space in the center. So the stuff is to the left and right and some padding vertical. Um, okay, yeah. And we also need a border between these items. Um, so let me just add a simple item border, which is super thin. And then we're gonna do something fun in a second. So let's get back to our iteration. Uh, where were we? Uh, I think here, the guest item, right. So for every guest item, we have uh, a first part, which is a view with the two text elements. So we have a text element, which says item dot, uh, item dot name. And we have a second text element, which is like item dot uh, text. So that's always left. In our row, we then also have a second view, which is at the end, which has these three buttons. Okay, so we're gonna put that in another view here. Um, and that view also actually has a, a, a flex direction of a row. Um, 
A little bit of gap between the elements and of course align items center and ju justify. So everything here should be uh, centered. And in that view we have two touchable opacities for plus and minus and we have the actual count in between. Uh, so let's put this in here. We have one touchable opacity. Um, I will just use it like this. For now, we're gonna do more in a second. Name will be remove circle outline. This will be a bit bigger, so size 26 and color. Uh, color is actually interesting. Uh, I will set the color in a second. So the color depends on uh, how many people are there. If we have zero people, that should also have a very light color. Otherwise, it should just have the default color. So we need to make this conditional in color. That's a bit complicated. We're gonna check if groups at the index dot count is greater than zero. If that's the case, uh, I will use colors dot gray. Uh, and otherwise, if that's not the case, I wanna use uh, a light color like uh, CD, CD, CD. Okay, so that should be a pretty light color. Um, additionally, we now have the text in the center, which is the item dot count. And then we should have another touchable opacity uh, after the text, which is the add circle outline. But this one is always color gray because you can always add something. We don't need that check here. Okay. Okay, not too bad. This is actually not too bad. Uh, for our styling here of the text, just making sure we're using the right font family again and a specific min width. So I will remove that for a second and it will show you something. So when I press on plus here, uh, I wanna add something to my state. That's actually not too hard, but I need to update the whole groups state object. It's not the perfect scenario. So I will do it like this. New groups equals an array of everything we had already in groups. And then new groups at index dot count plus plus, and then set groups with the new groups. So a little heck here to increase that. Um, now you're gonna see it kind of moves here, especially if you go from, uh, okay, I can't do zero, especially if you go from one digit to two digits. And in order to prevent that, we can give that field a min width already. So you see no more jumping and we're accounting for that text. I can also put this to the first touchable opacity I had uh, and just do, oh, can I do it like this? Mm, I mean, it depends, right? Uh, it depends if new groups count is greater than zero then then we use i should have assigned this new groups index count minus one otherwise zero okay so now i can reduce it by one but only until it's zero and then i can't and we have our conditional styling and i Thing. we have figured out most of the stuff here. We probably just um, need to update the styling a bit for the both of the text elements here. So for these two text elements, I just wanna use our own styling again. So mon sb and mon. And then um, we wanna do one more thing. This is actually, I think, the last thing we need to implement in our clone today. Uh, and that is a border. So if you inspect this, you're gonna see border here, border here, border here, no border. So we're gonna make sure that we add a border after these items, but not to the last one. And we can do this, of course, with a little trick once again. So where we have the guest item styling, I will wrap this in an array. And conditionally, we're gonna add something else. So if the index plus one, uh, is still below groups uh, or guest groups dot length. If that's the case, I want to add the styles dot item border and otherwise I will add null. So why can I do null here? I couldn't do it before. I 
think I just messed up the syntax. Anyway, what we see now is that we have border here, here, and here, but not here. And that's exactly what we wanted to have. I don't know if there, I, I, probably there are like 10 different ways to solve this, but I haven't found anything else. Where did I want to do this a second ago and said, oh, why can't I do this? Um, there was a place where I wanted to add conditional styling and no fallback. Uh, I can't find it anymore. That makes me mad now. There was a place. I'm pretty sure we had a place just a sec. It was, was it here? Uh, okay. I, so if I, let me just do this one thing. This is just a Simon thing. Can I do it like this? Yeah. Okay, so by default it has mon and now if it is selected it has mon sb. Okay, thank you for that. So let's see. Uh, we can click this. We can switch up here. We have our custom header component added. Uh, we have the wrong element open, so I will use state zero. Uh, but now it should come up with this one. I can scroll through this. We have no more padding here. We have a nice search field with an icon. I can go to the next card where we have a calendar where I can select stuff or I could go back. We could of course also update if we have selected something in the Airbnb app, this label here updates. I don't want to make this more view even more complicated because it was already kind of complicated with a lot of things. So that's something you could certainly do as well. We of course also have the blurred background and we have the nice footer area of this view. Uh, we have the calendar and we finally have the selection actually with a bit of logic involved for some conditional styling and some borders. And if I press clear all, we will be back here and uh, not everything's back. Um, probably I should call set groups back with the initial guest groups. I think that should now, if I now go into this and clear all then we're back at zero and with that we have finished our airbnb clone application finally after i don't know three four hours i hope you uh, stick with me until here and if you did so you should now have a really cool application that you can use uh, as a showcase you have a tab bar and we have nice interaction with clerk for the user account and also a pretty cool login screen so enjoy your airbnb app oh. Alright, and that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed the Airbnb clone, I hope you could follow through and I hope you learned a bunch of things about React Native, about how to use Expo Router, how to use authentication with Clark, how to use maps, how to use cool models and just a lot of these small things that just happen in these pages. If you enjoyed it, link below the video to the code and of course you should also subscribe to the channel for more builds coming in the future and always let me know in the comments what you would like to see in the future. I really enjoy providing these bigger tutorials, these clone tutorials for you and you also seem to enjoy them. So uh, let me know what you want to see. Check out galaxies.dev if you also want more in-depth courses about React Native and I hope to catch you in the next video. So until then, happy coding, Simon.